Patriot won the toss. They want the football. On the near side, number 23 is cornerback Jeff Smith. And wide receiver James Caber, number 82. Nebraska's Kevin Seibel, and he can boot him. He will have a following win as he kicks off. 76,000 are standing. Here we go. This will be Jeff Smith, number 23, a cornerback as a defensive specialist. He gets across the 15 and will be pulled down on the 19-yard line. On the 19-yard line, where it's Missouri's ball, first down, and 10 yards to go. Wade Freiner made the tackle on the kickoff for the Cornhuskers. Now checking the backfield, Brad Perry will start at quarterback a junior. A great freshman, Santiago Barbosa, the tailback. The leading rusher is Tracy Mack. He is the fullback. The wide receiver is James Caver, along with Craig White. And the first play from scrimmage will be a running play to Tracy Mack. Mack will cross the 20 to about the 23, and there he'll be hit by the middle guard, Jeff Merrill. Game of three, second down and seven. Missouri, a 24-point underdog in the game this afternoon. The split end is Craig White, number 87, to the top of the screen. And Andy Gibbler, the tight end, works this way. Brad Perry putting the ball up. It is completed. It'll be close to a first down at the 29-yard line. The damn Kroger makes the hit on Wayne Davis. Number The offensive line, the captain, Andy Ecker, and the only senior in that offensive unit. James Dempsey is the left guard. He's a junior out of St. Louis. Phil Greenfield has won the center's job, just a sophomore. Bernard Laster is the right guard, a junior out of Marshall, Missouri. Conrad Goody at right tackle from Chesterfield, Missouri. And the tight end is Andy Gibbler. This will be third down and a yard to go. Quarterback sneak. Brad Perry trying for the first down, piled up right at the 30-yard line. So we have seen three plays as the game gets underway, and let's check in with Tom Gatewood. You know, it's pretty interesting that they wanted to take the ball and run into the win in the first quarter. They obviously want the wind advantage in the second and the fourth quarter to have some kind of momentum in those two stanzas of this football game. So a wise decision, I think, on the part of Missouri. They're throwing into the teeth of the wind. They're going to have to throw the football. We pointed out that that's what they're going to have to do, be very, very aggressive right off the bat. They've got a first down here in this first series. First down, Missouri, on their own 30-yard line. Haver is the wide receiver. Brad Perry wants to throw it over the middle and does so to number 83, Andy Gibbler, the tight end. Andy over the 40. That'll get about 13. And a first down before the monster back, Chris Van Norman, can bring him down, and the flag has been thrown. And it was thrown in the backfield. Got an offside penalty against Missouri. Really going to hurt them had an opportunity to move the ball upfield, spotting Gibbler on a, just a quick look in, quick hop pattern to number 83. He's a number three receiver, and the favorite target is to hit him on that quick opener, just looking over the middle. Andy Gibbler will come out. Back in comes Craig White. Gibbler, by the way, such a talented receiver, came into the game needing to catch only two. To tie the Missouri school record now held by Joe Stewart. But they lost a 13-yard gain. And now it is first down 15 Missouri back on their own 25 yard line and the junior quarterback Brad Perry is ready. Santillo Barbosa and Tracy Mack are in the running back. The pitch to Barbosa. Oh, he's nailed behind the line on the 22 yard line. Alan Lyde is number 18. He's a senior. He plays the corner and he loves it when it's going that way. His assignment on that play is to contain. He's got to contain first, and then he's got to try to come up and make the hit. That time he fell off of his block and made a, it's just an exceptional play. Alan Lyde. Second down and long. Second down and 17. And I believe Missouri will summon a timeout. The Tigers will take a timeout. Tom, they're going to be in tough position here if they are forced to kick into a very strong win very early in the football game. When we come back to the action, it'll be second and 17 back in just a moment. There's more to John Hancock than life insurance. Sophomore Wallace Snowden, a sophomore out of Hot Springs, Arkansas, comes in as a running back to work with Tracy Mack. This will be second down in 17 Missouri, back on their own 23-yard line. Brad Perry, a drop-back passer throws, and it is incomplete. 
intended for Caber, number 82, the senior flanker. He was hit just at the moment by Alan Lyde. Well, Lyde already, Tom, showing up twice very prominently. Absolutely. He was right in Perry's face just as he was releasing the ball. He screened him a little bit as he was trying to hit Caber downfield. And Perry is going to have to withstand the pressure from the red shirts all afternoon. Third and very long for Missouri. James Caber is a wide receiver. Brad Perry on a straight drop. Now throws toward the middle and intended for Caber number 82. It is incomplete, but it came very close to being intercepted by Nebraska and broken up by Brett Clark. The kicking team comes on the field and we'll have another look, Tom. Perry is trying to test that secondary for Nebraska early. He's the best passer that Missouri has. That's why he's inserted in this ball game, and he's trying to work it in, but he's trying to force the ball in so far. Nebraska playing very well in the secondary. Marlon Adler will be punting into a strong wind. He hits it from his own 15. It has hang time and a fair catch called for and made by number 28, Jeff Smith. And the Cornhuskers, excellent field position. The first time they go on the offense, we'll be watching the Cornhuskers when we come back in just a moment. Marlon Adler's punt into the stiff wind, a 29 yarder. Cornhuskers first down on their own 47. No score, first possession for Nebraska. And the brilliant Turner Gill, now a junior, will be pitching to the eye back, Roger Craig, into the secondary, down to the 45 yard line. Roger Craig, starting at eye back, as you know, suffering a hip pointer last week against Kansas State, was Mike Rozier. Checking the offense, G Turner Gill is at the throttle. Roger Craig returns to play eye back. Doug Wilkening moves over to play fullback. He's the number two fullback. The brilliant Irving Fryer back from an injury, along with Todd Brown as the split in. And now for Nebraska, second down and two. Again, Craig, the eye back, this time hit at the line of scrimmage, takes it forward about two yards. It was Randy Jostis out of Omaha, Nebraska, who made the tackle. Now here's the Nebraska offensive line. It is awesome. Randy Tice, a senior at left tackle. The left guard, Mike Mandelko, is a senior. What a good one. And here's the Outland Trophy winner, the All-American Dave Remington. Dean Steincooler, the only non-senior, he's a junior. And Jeff Quapik, a senior, is at right tackle. The tight end is all big eight, Jamie Williams. What an awesome offensive front for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And they have a first down. On their very first possession, the ball goes over into Missouri Tiger territory. It is Cornhusker first and 10 on the Missouri Tiger, 43-yard line. As we look at Tom Osborne across the way, now it is 10th year as the head man at Nebraska. He never has won fewer than nine games in any year. A stand-up quick pass by Turner Gill to the tight end Jamie Williams. Williams across the 30 to about the 28-yard line where he's hit by linebacker Jay Wilson of the Missouri Tigers. And that's that quickie, and Turner Gill knows how to work that one. That's a play that could be there all afternoon. Gill, very, very experienced at reading defenses, spots the defense to his liking. Jamie Williams strictly on a call saying, hey, look for the ball right away. As soon as I call it at the line of scrimmage, look for it over your inside shoulder. We'll see that a lot this afternoon. Ricky Simmons in as a wide receiver now for Nebraska, and the ball is being handed off to Doug Wilkening of the fullback. That was a first down play and a short gainer as the nose guard, James Luckett, helped out by the leading tackler, linebacker, Jay Wilson. And here are the Missouri Tigers. Defensively, Bobby Bell, Randy Jostis, James Luckett in the middle, Rod Skillman, and Ken Judd. The linebackers are Jay Wilson and Dave McCubrey. For Nebraska, second down at 10 on the 29-yard line of the Missouri Tigers. No score, 10.43 to play in the first quarter. Gill to Roger Craig. Craig the eye back across the 20. Stays in bounds across the 15 and not out of bounds until he gets to the 12-yard line. 17 yards. The key to Nebraska is teamwork. Number 34 will be coming to your screen here. Doug Wilkening throwing a lead block for Craig, number 21. Roger Craig, excellent runner, but it helps to have some help from your teammates. Wilkening on that particular play helps him with the big block. Nebraska first and 10 once again. They've been scoring almost every week on their first possession. Roger Craig playing eye back today with Mike Rozier suffering from a hit pointer. And a fumble by Doug Wilkening. Missouri has the football. Wilkening of the fullback fumble. Missouri has recovered. 
Let's see if we can see the fumble. Very scrappy play on the part of Missouri here. They're just kind of slashing, putting helmets on the football, uh, scraping, sticking elbows in, hands in, just trying to strip the ball. That time a Missouri helmet right on the football, right at the line of scrimmage as Wilkening coughs the ball up. Looks like Randy Jostis or perhaps Kevin Potter was on the loose football. Potter, the all-conference strong safety, and Nebraska turned away on a turnover. Missouri now first down on their own nine-yard line. Brad Perry is the quarterback, and this is Mack, the fullback, and Nebraska raising up immediately, led by Allen Lyde, number 18. Bob, this is kind of a reverse script. This is what Missouri usually does. They usually turn the football over on a fumble to their opponent. This particular time, Nebraska turns the ball over to Missouri, so they've got a chance to mount a drive. And by the way, Brad Perry, the quarterback, has never lost a game that he has started. So another reason for him to be inserted in this ball game by Warren Powers. Second down at eight, Brad Perry, the junior, is the quarterback for Warren Powers, Missouri Tigers, to Caver, number 82, one-on-one, -on -one, and he does move his way by Burt, number 33, and then is hit by Bill Weber and taken down on about the 18-yard line. But a good one-on-one -on -one move. Very much so, and it's a confidence-building kind of a pass. Just try to get some momentum going, throw the ball. You can't throw it into the teeth of the wind, so go to something kind of short, build up your confidence. 76,000 are here. The 123rd consecutive sellout. A beautiful, beautiful scene with the red and the white. And now for Missouri, third down and one. Wallace Snowden is in as the tailback. Tracy Mack is the fullback in the eye. And we have the clock stopped for a moment. The referee at our game this afternoon is John McClinic. Underdog Missouri coming to Lincoln, Nebraska, and there are the officials. The referee, the man on the white hat, is John McClinic. This is third down in one Missouri, 9-18 to play, first quarter in Lincoln, Nebraska. And now as the Tigers come up to the line, James Caver, the wide receiver, number 82, is flanked toward the top of your screen. Snowden and Mack are the running backs. Perry is the quarterback, gives to Mack, trying for the first down. He appears to have it. He's over the 20 to about the 21. And linebacker Steve Dam Kroger, one of the Nebraska captains, is the man who stops the play. Very important for Missouri to try to mount an attack here. Again, if they're going to go to the air, try to do something where you don't try to go on top too early. The wind is a factor in the ball game. Don't loft any passes. Go with the five, six, seven yard type of pass. And Perry is very, very good at that. Coming into the ball game, he's a 54% uh, passer. Dwayne Davis comes out. His dad, by the way, Willie Davis, what a great all-pro with the Packers. Now dropping the pass, Brad Perry, and his receiver apparently had gone by. That was James Caver. It is incomplete. Caver incomplete. Now let's go to New York for a cut in with Jim Lambley. We were not quite ready to go to New York. We'll check in a little bit later. Right now, it is second down in 10, Missouri, on their own 21-yard line. Snowden and Mack are the running backs. Brad Perry spins. Perry still has the football. Somehow squirts through a very small opening, out over the 25 and up to about the 28. It'll leave him about too shy of a first down. And those two talented Cornhusker linebackers, Steve Damproger and Steve McWhorter, bring the play to a halt. Third down in three. Now we will again try to check in with Jim Lampley in New York. At Morgantown, West Virginia, Penn State has used a double reverse for a touchdown for the second time today. Earlier, John Williams scored on one. This time, it is flanker Kenny Jackson, and that extends the Penn State lead to 24-0. Back to Bob Murphy. On third down and three, Brad Perry trying to hit the pass at the far sideline. It is incomplete, and now the Tiger punting team will come on the field. Perry now, two out of six for 13 yards. Tracy Mack, the fullback, carried three times for seven yards, and again, Marion Marlon Adler is in to punt into the wind. Irving Fryer is back along with Jeff Smith. Here's the boot into the wind, kind of a line drive type kick. Number 28 is Jeff Smith. Smith of Nebraska still working and gets back to the 45-yard line. 
So the first time the Cornhuskers had it on their 47, this time they'll start from their own 45. We are midway in the first quarter and we'll be coming right back. During the week of October 17th through the 24th, communities throughout the nation will make an investment in America's greatest resource, its youth, by supporting National High School Activities Week. Support these valuable programs. Nebraska first down, their own 45. Ricky Simmons in as the wide receiver. Mitch Prink, number 89, is the tight end. Turner Guild to Roger Craig. Craig, the eye back, will gain about three. Smothered just before he can reach, reach midfield. Taken down at the 49-yard line. Ken Judd, the defensive end. And look at Roger Craig limping off the field. You see the Outland Trophy winner, number 50, Reming in the center. Very, very quick acceleration after the snap. Takes out a couple of people with his block. Seals off the inside and gives Craig a chance to bounce outside for the three-yard game. Roger Craig, 30 yards and four carries. You saw he just limped off the field. He's had a problem with an ankle. And the sensational sophomore, Jeff Smith, number 28, is now the eye back. Turner Gill fakes him, throws, and on a play action, the pass is incomplete. Intended for Todd Brown, number 29, the senior split end out of Holdridge, Nebraska. Only one of the few passes you're going to see Turner Gill throw. They average about 19 to 20 passes per game. Really not throwing a lot. Don't have to. They've got an awesome running attack. But a lot of pressure is on Roger Craig because uh, the the absence of uh, the All-America uh, running back. He's out of the ball game. He's got a little bit of a problem. We'll talk about it and develop it a little bit later. Rosier and Craig are both out of the game now, and the sophomore Jeff Smith is the third eye back. Turner Gill throws on the run. It is completed at the 45-yard line. The number 30, 30, 27, Irving Fryer. Fryer is the very fleet-footed wing back, and a penalty flag has been thrown. They may be tacking on. So the penalty, an offside penalty, will go against Missouri. Dave Remington. The All-American center, 6'3", 290 pounds. What a football player. And you know, Tom, he won the outlet last year, the third Cornhusker to do it over the years. If he does it again this year, he'll be the only player in college football history to win it twice. You know, I played with uh, a couple of the Outland Trophy winners from Nebraska, Rich Glover and Larry Jacobson. When I was at the Giants in New York, they both came, and they won it back-to-back -back years, 71 and 72. First down, 10, Nebraska, no score. Time remaining first quarter, seven minutes and 10 seconds. Jeff Smith is the tailback, the eye back for Tom Osborne. Number 28, by the way, he's averaged over 12 yards a carry. Here he goes. The sophomore breaks it into the secondary. Down the sideline, now the 15. Finally out of bounds on the 11-yard line. It began at the 45. It winds up on the 11. And Kevin Potter, number 18, kept it from going in. Watch center number 50, Remington. After he left the bar, he seals off the left side. They've got lead blocking up front, number 34, Wilkening. And then it's off to the races for Jeff Smith. The key at the point of attack, lots of blocking. Just opening it up, and he just reads his way. 34 yards for sophomore Jeff Smith. He's averaged over 12 yards a carry this season. First and 10 on the 11-yard line. Jeff Smith smothered this time at the 10-yard line. There were plenty of Tigers right there, led by Kevin Potter, the all-Big 8 Conference strong safety. Tough act to follow when Rozier is not in the lineup, but Jeff Smith has come right in and filled the void. But again, the pressure is on Remington and that front wall, that offensive line has got to come through because they're used to that quick Rozier being there, picking up those holes. So the front wall has got to provide the holes for Jeff Smith and Craig to go through this afternoon. Second down and nine, Turner Gill running in the attack for the Cornhuskers. Nebraska number five of the nation and the nation's number one offensive ball club. And Turner Gill wants to talk this one over. He asked for time. He'll go over to talk to Tom Osborne. Nebraska is rushing for 404 yards a game. That's number one in the country. They're number one in total offense. They're number one in scoring time. They are awesome. <laughs> That's uh, putting it mildly, I tell you. They're led by Turner Gill, again, the junior quarterback. He's on the sidelines right now trying to uh, find out what Osborne has in mind. They've got an awesome offense, and he has the ability to call audibles about 50 to 60% of the time. That particular time, Missouri went into a defensive set. He was a little bit confused, decided wisely to call a timeout rather than try to throw an errant pass or call the wrong play and maybe force a turnover. Time remaining in the 
first quarter, six minutes and 13 seconds. Well, an inside look at the NFL strike. What are the real issues and what are the solutions? Expert guests, including a live interview with a renowned labor mediator, Theodore Keel, will join Howard Cosell for all the latest developments and a comprehensive analysis tomorrow on ABC Sports Beat. And also tomorrow on ABC. 10.30 in the East, 9.30 Central Time, the 26-mile-plus New York City Marathon race, perhaps the most famous marathon run in the world. You'll be able to watch it from start to finish on ABC. That's tomorrow morning, 9.30 Central. Second down and nine, Nebraska. Smith is the eye back. Turner Gill looking for a receiver, and Turner Gill is going to be sacked. Dropped across the 15, back on the 18-yard line. Leading the charge, linebacker Jay Wilson. Now, that's one thing Missouri has done awfully well. That's their 34th sack, Tom. Turner Gill is looking for Todd Brown and Irving Fryer on the left side who were in a receiving tandem. They were not open. They were covered man-to-man, -man, and they get leakage from the inside, and the Missouri defense comes through with the sack. Again, you can see nobody open. Gill is ready to release the ball. He's got a quick release, and he's got excellent pass coverage in the beginning, uses his mobility, but nobody's open. Third and 16, Turner Gill takes a look around. He's looking for Ricky Simmons, number seven, and he, oh, it's coming out of his hands. Incomplete. Ricky Simmons appeared to have a six-pointer, but it slithered away as Demetrius Johnson came alongside. Demetrius Johnson... He's their number one interceptor. He's got three on the season. He's not in good position here at all as Simmons has slipped behind him. Simmons has got 4-3 speed. That's why he's behind Johnson. He just forgets to hold the football. Turner Gill will be the holder. The Cornhuskers' Kevin Seibel will try a 33-yard field goal with the following win. Gill puts it down. The kick is on the way. We are waiting, and it is good. A 33-yard Kevin Seibel field goal. And Seibel now four out of five this year. The Huskers are on the board with 524 to play. They lead three to nothing. We'll be right back. At Avis, we have a brand new service for busy travelers, Avis Shuttle Express. I'm David Mahoney, Chair. Kevin Seibel kicked his fourth field goal of the year. You know, Tom, he hasn't had that many opportunities because Cornhuskers usually take it into the end zone. <laughs> But with that kind of a trailing wind, I got a feeling it's going to go through the end zone with no problem. He's got a very, very strong, strong leg, and he's a conventional style kicker. Straight ahead. You don't see too many of them anymore. Now Seibel will be kicking off for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers with a 3-0 lead. And with the following wind, it will go beyond Doby and out of the end zone. And Missouri will have a first down on their own at 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers from their own 20. Missouri has always played very, very well when coming to Lincoln, Nebraska. They've won three of the last four games they have played in Lincoln. And this is one of the storied series in college football, one of the oldest and most brilliant rivalries. Nebraska with an eight-game lead, but this is game number 76. Snowden and Mack are in the backfield. Santillo Barbosa has not played since the first series. This will be thrown in the backfield to Wallace Snowden, number 40, and he'll come very close to a first down, up to the 29-yard line, and the monster back of Nebraska, Chris Van Norman, who wears number 38, will stop the play there. The key here is to get the ball to your receiver very, very quickly, but to get the offensive lineman out in front of him, get him out in tandem, and make some blocks downfield. The center, Phil Greenfield, number 53, and number 67, Bernard Laster, are out front, in fact, to lead the way for the receiver on the play. That's what you've got to do to make the play effective. Second down and one, Missouri, and this will be the fullback, Tracy Mack, looking for that one yard needed for a first down. And we'll wait to see where they spot the ball. Bill Weber, the sophomore defensive end for Nebraska, and the veteran linebacker Steve Damkruger stopped the play. There's the scoring drive on the field goal. The kick was 33 yards by Kevin Seibel. Nebraska has started from their own 45-yard line. Powers, again, throwing very controlled passes. Those are the plays he's sending in to Perry to run. Little flare passes, five-yard passes. Don't try to go up on top because that wind is right in your face. James Caver, number 82, the wide receiver, a first down play, and a throw that is completed to the fullback, Mack, and Mack will gain about three into the arms of hard-hitting Alan Lyde, the senior cornerback from Wichita, Kansas. I tell you, Tracy Mack is a, is a handful, I tell you. He's a tank. 
he catches the ball, the, the idea is to get him, get it to him about three yards upfield or in the backfield and just let him turn it on. He's tough to bring down once he's in the open field. And he's only a sophomore out of Rock Hill, Missouri, averaging four yards and a little better every time he carries the football. It's second down and seven. Perry, again to Snowden in the backfield. He's still behind the line of scrimmage. Now will be taken down by number 87, Bill Weber, and linebacker Steve McWhorter. And so this time, and the Cornhuskers are really putting pressure on Brad Perry. They are. He really doesn't have that much time, uh, but he's trying to take advantage of the speed and quickness of the red-shirted Nebraska team. If they come across and he can get that flare out there and hope that there's no penetration by the linebackers following the play, if somebody can stumble, make a mistake, they've got a big game. So far, they haven't had that advantage. Defensively, Wade Griner and Tim Holbrook both check in. Holbrook as a nickelback, perhaps. And the pass thrown to Snowden, number 40, completed. Downed immediately by number 23, Tim Holbrook, who just came in as the nickelback. And the tackle made on the 39-yard line, not a first down, but not far from it. Guaranteed the type of passes being thrown would be different if the teams were turned around the other way. You really can't. Very, very strong. Win down there on the field. Don't want to take a chance. Rather not have an interception. Try to get some field position here and hold on to the second quarter with a low score. Marlon Adler, the sophomore quarterback and the punter for Missouri, dropping back to punt on fourth down and short yardage. Irving Fryer is one of the two receivers waiting. He hangs this one and he hits it beautifully. Fryer is 27 at his own 15. Fryer still skipping around. Now the 25 to 30. Oh, and knocked down on the 35-yard line. And remember, Fryer's the guy who's missed two games in a row because of a thigh injury and an ankle injury, but he still has maneuverability and the ability to make the big play. Number 27, Irving Fryer. Special teams performer Duncan Hoffman. He's the backup on defense at the left corner. Always seems to be right around the football when the special teams are on the field. And he made the tackle. Now Nebraska will have Mark Shaleen in as a fullback. It is first down from their own, a 35 yard line. Turner Gill keeping and running, and Turner to about the 40 yard line, taken by Dave McCoubrey, the junior linebacker from Chillicothe, Missouri. Gill looked a little confused on the play. He was looking for a little bit of kind of a belly ride by a fullback. The fullback was flaring out, waiting for a pitch. He was a little confused on it, decided to carry the ball himself, go into the hole where the, the, the play was designed to go. Jane Swanson, number 17, a sophomore in as a wingback now for Nebraska. This will be second down and five. Remember, Rozier and Craig are both on the sideline. The pitch will be to Jeff Smith, the sophomore tailback or Ibach, and he'll get about two. It'll be third down and short yardage. Rod Skillman, number 51, getting up from the tackle. Watch number 99, Randy Justice. He plays off the blocks from Nebraska, comes in and gets his hand on the ball carrier. Just a hand. He's underneath that pile there, but he causes a lot of confusion at the line of scrimmage to set up the defensive play. Third and two from their 43, Turner Gill. More than a first down into the open across the 50, 45, the 40, out of bounds on the Nebraska 37-yard line. Turner Gill running from his own 43-yard line, seven yards upfield, and another 13 downfield. A 20-yard goal by Turner Gill, the multi-talented quarterback for Nebraska. Multi-talented is right. You know, he's a baseball player as well. You see what he's got coming into this ball game: 57 carries for 284 yards. And he's got 4.7 speed, 4.6 speed himself. But he's got good eyesight because he's got to have a good field of vision in order to make the right call in that option type of run. Mitch Crink is in as the tight end, and Ricky Simmons is the wide receiver. Jeff Smith, number 28, the sophomore tailback out of Wichita, Kansas, takes it to the 35. That will gain two. He can get no more because of linebacker Jay Wilson, a junior from Decatur, Illinois, and hardworking Rod Skillman, the defensive tackle from Dalton, Missouri. Jay Wilson is only averaging about 15 tackles per game. He's the man who's after Osborne's Cornhuskers all afternoon. Number 34, Jay Wilson, the linebacker. Looking at that graphic on rushing, it boils down to about 404 yards a game. Second down and eight for Nebraska. Todd Brown back in as the wide receiver. Turner Gill throwing and for Brown, number 29, but incomplete. Good hard hit defensively by Raymond Harrison. He's the free safety, number six for Missouri. Ooh, yeah, Missouri's got a strength. They've got a defense. That's what Osborne respects. And they hit hard. 
They really hit you. And number six, Raymond Hairston comes up here and makes Todd Brown pay the price for holding on to the football. Big collision, big collision on the sideline. And Brown is still having a little problem there. Probably just lost a little wind. He exposed his body as he extended himself on the play. And he now comes off, and the crowd gives him a rousing round of applause. But he really extended his body, reaching and stretching out. Got a little shot to the ribs, but just had the wind knocked out, because he's okay. One thing Nebraska had counted on this week with Michael Rozier missing the football. They were counting on Roger Craig as we look again. Right, he's got good concentration here. He has the ball all the way. It's just the excellent hit by Hairston that shakes the ball loose. Now, Rozier and Craig have both been on the sideline, and the brilliant sophomore Jeff Smith is the tailback. Here comes Smith on the run, trying to turn it inside, and they corral him. Corralled at the 35, maybe the 34-yard line, and held to a very short gain with Randy Jostis leading the charge for the Missouri Tigers, along with Taft Sales, number 95, a junior tackle from Kansas City. When you have an excellent play like that by a defensive unit, you strictly got to try to get the, your ball carrier to try to make a play on his own. He wasn't able to do it that time. Kevin Seibel kicking it from the 46, a 56-yard try. It is going to come up short. And so that is the end of the first quarter here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. And after the first 15 minutes of action, the Cornhuskers lead by a score of three to nothing. We'll be back for the second quarter in just a moment. He's not the father of the cross. We start the second quarter in Lincoln. We start the second quarter in Lincoln, Nebraska. The second quarter in Lincoln, Nebraska, Missouri trailing three to nothing. The Tigers on their own 34, and now they'll have the following win to the second quarter of the football game. Brad Perry rolling back, setting up, throwing, and he finds Gibbler wide open at the 40. He takes it out of bounds on the 46-yard line. Andy Gibbler, the senior tight end from Grandview, Missouri. He had caught one earlier. Tom, it was nullified by a penalty. Absolutely. He's now tied for the all-time leading receiver in Missouri history. And Perry now, the whole psychology is different. He's now throwing the ball upfield rather than to the sidelines or just on those short patterns. He's now trying to find receivers upfield. Very short-handed catch by Gibbler. You can see why he is now tied as the all-time leading receiver. One more, and he's the record holder. Gain of 12, first down Missouri on their own 47-yard line. Brad Perry, the junior quarterback from Trenton, Missouri, using the long count, and now the pitch will go to Wallace Snowden, number 40. Snowden doing well. Comes to the 45-yard line of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The monster back senior Chris Van Norman makes the tackle there. Snowden is doing a little bit all. He's an all-purpose kind of a guy. He's caught a couple passes today. He's been running the football well. Again, he's getting some key lead blocking, particularly the guards, the Dempsey and Laster up front, doing a lot for him. Total yards in the first quarter. Nebraska 106 and Missouri 47. Nebraska 92 rushing yards. They have averaged 404 rushing yards per game, number one in the nation. This is second down and two, and this will be Snowden, the tailback. First down and more. Eric Green, or Dave Burke, number 33, makes the tackle, but a beautiful run on the part of sophomore Wallace Snowden out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Snowden is only a sophomore, and he has only carried the ball 20 times so far this season. There's Laster, number 67, up front, making a good seal block on the pull, and then Snowden just turns on the Jets, handling the ball real well for somebody who's only carried it 20, 20 times so far this season. Now Missouri has come 31 yards since getting the ball on their own 34. They have a first down and 10 on the Cornhusker 35. And this pitch will be to Wallace Snowden. He finds very little running room this time and has to bring it out of bounds. So with a moment here, let's check in with Jim Lampley in New York. Buckeyes have started off hot in Bloomington, Indiana. Last week against Illinois, Ohio State quarterback Mike Tomczak played the first really effective game of his career, and he started again that way. This 72-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Anderson has the Bucks on top, 14-0. For Missouri, second down and 10, Brad Perry. 
with a straight drop now throws and it's caught beautifully on the 23 yard line by the split end Craig White a junior letterman from Lawrence Kansas and that'll be another Tiger first down they now have come from their own 34 they own a first down on the Nebraska 23 yard line you see why Powers Warren Powers has confidence in Brad Perry he's in that ball game 57 percent passer he's thrown four touchdowns so far this season He's looking upfield, not to the sidelines anymore, upfield for 10 yards or more type passes. Wallace Snowden, the tailback, hitting the handoff about two is all he can get to the 20 run. Running into the middle guard of Nebraska, Jeff Merrill, a 258-pound senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. This damn burger here coming, shooting into the gap. He's right in there trying to get his way through. And when Snowden comes through, he bends off a blocker and makes a stop. It's number one tackler for the Corn Huskers, Dan Kruger. Glenn Malvern, a sophomore, number 32 in the Missouri backfield now, along with Wallace Snowden. Rolling out is Brad Perry. He looks and he throws. Oh, it is incomplete at the 10-yard line for James Caver, number 82. And that came very close to being a very big first down. I believe Caver gets screened a little bit here. You'll see a couple of red shirts kind of cross his path of vision as Perry, a little play action, kind of a roll, then stop. Find Caver across the middle, but you'll see two red shirts just kind of cross in front of Caver here just before the opportunity for the reception. Brad, that may be a screen a little bit on the play. Brad Perry had hit six in a row until that incompletion. Third down and eight, Missouri. If they don't make the first down, they might be able to get three. And the pass, first down, to Caver on the seven-yard line. Senior flanker James Caver from Waynesville, Missouri. And Brad Perry is throwing very, very well. I tell you, Perry is my kind of quarterback. Having been a receiver, to have that kind of confidence in me after I've just dropped the pass to come right back to me and find under a pressure situation, get the ball to me, makes me feel good as a receiver. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with Joe Theismann, and that's the kind of relationship we had. You need that kind of a thing. They have communication down there on that football field, even under pressure. Wayne Davis is in as the tight end. Craig White is the split in. First down and goal on the eight-yard line. Caber, the flanker, is the man who goes in motion. Brad Perry throwing, and it's batted down. It is incomplete, and it was Jeff Merrill, the middle guard, who got his hands high in the air and batted it away. If Big key here, take the pressure off the secondary, people up front, get your hands up. Just a fundamental drill here, get your hands up. If you can knock the ball down, really takes a lot of pressure off those defensive backs. This has been a good-looking drive put together by Warren Powers Tigers. They began back on their own 34. Now it's second down, eight yards and goal. Wallace Snowden and Tracy Mack are the running backs for Missouri. And the play has been busted. The flags have been thrown. Perry keeps it and runs, goes to the five. And now we'll check with the man with the white hat and see who made the wrong move. <laughs> Very close here. Wasn't sure whether the Nebraska comes across. You see no contact being made, though. But Gibbler, number 83, just out of the screen to the left, on the left side as a tight end. He goes offside. No contact, almost. A little stutter step here. And then number 83 goes off offside as he's watching the players on defense rather than listening for the cadence. Might be a little difficult to hear because this crowd here, this partisan crowd, is doing a lot of screaming. 76,000 people here at Memorial Stadium. Now the referee talking with Andy Eckerd. Across the way, Warren Powers indicating, let's take it. It'll be a five-yard walk-off against Nebraska. This will put the ball on the four-yard line. It was actually Steve Hamburger, I believe, Tom, who made the first move. And then everybody else started moving too. All right, very difficult to see if they touch players from our vantage point. But obviously, down there on the field, they say the Red Shirts made contact with Missouri. And even though the tight end Gibbler came off sides, it was the fall of Nebraska. So they pick up the yards. Now you can hear the, the crowd, the influence of the crowd. Perry cannot get his signals off. And he wants a little bit of an official timeout here until the crowd gets a little bit more composed. Missouri, a huge underdog in the game, but a team that has always played well in Lincoln, Nebraska. If they score this one, if they take it in, they will have driven the ball 66 yards. Now it is second down and four yards and goal to go. And Brad Perry gets the team back together, hoping he'll be able to quiet the crowd down. Well, they had a tight one last year. Six to nothing was the score. And it's shaping up to be that same kind of a tight ball game right here. Wallace Snowden and Tracy Mack 
in the backfield for Missouri. Perry to Mack, number 36, the fullback, looking for the flag and out of bounds, I believe, on about the one. It was Toby Williams who chased him out of bounds across the way, along with Steve Dam Kroger, number 35. They're close to the end zone now. Just get the ball to Mighty Mack here, Tracy Mack. Give him a field of vision. He's got lots of white shirts up front. Everybody's out front. If he can make a couple of people miss, he just runs out of real estate. He tries to stretch the play a little bit too long. You see, though, he does have the instinct to turn the football up the field, knowing where the sidelines are. Good play by Toby Williams. Are you one of Mack inside the flag? That's a third down. Uh, less than a yard to go. Mack and Snowden are the running backs. Quarterback Brad Perry is waiting. Gaber goes in motion. Right at the goal line with Wallace Snowden, but I don't think that he is over. Wade Kleiner, a 210 pound defensive back of him, stopped him shy of the goal line along with Scott Strasberger. Tracy just needs a little bit more experience. He's only a sophomore. He's still learning the position, learning that running position. He was not close enough to the end zone line to really make this diving effort. He's two and a half yards short. He's got no room there to actually get into the end zone with that kind of a lunge. So a little bit of a judgment error on the part of the running back that only experience will correct. Eric Green is in at fullback. A freshman, he brought the play in. They'll go from the eye. He's the up back in the eye. And Perry will throw wide open as Kipler, the tight end, number 83. The Tigers have scored and taken the lead. Beautiful call on fourth down. Eric Green, the freshman fullback, brought the play in for Warren Powers. And then Brad Perry passes to the tight end, Andy Kibler, and that's the one I guess that ties the school record. That's the one I believe that maybe breaks it. I don't know. Have to check our official stats. He needed two in order to go ahead and become the leading scorer of all time, leading uh, receiver, rather, of all time for Missouri. Todd Richmond will try the point after, and the barefooted kick is up, and the barefooted kick is good. And now, with 11.34 to play in the first half, the Missouri Tigers have marked 66 yards and scored. Tricky, a little bit of play action here. They fake the same play again to Mighty Mack, Tracy Mack, and then on a delay pattern, hit Gibbler out to the left, to the right side. He faked the block down front. So with Missouri leading now, seven to three in the first half, we'll be back after this. We look at Tom Osborne and his quarterback, Turner Gill. Look at that marvelous coaching record by Tom Osborne, who played college football at Hastings. Has been at Nebraska for 20 years, 11 years as an assistant under the great Bob Devaney, now the athletic director, and so successful in his own right. Missouri now leading 7-3. Brad Durdit, Burdett, a sophomore, will be kicking off, going deep to receive Jeff Smith and Ricky Simmons. Here is the kick, headed toward Ricky Simmons. He's back in the end zone. He'll stay there. Ricky Simmons, number seven of Nebraska, elects to stay there. And the Big Red will have a first down on their own 20-yard line. Missouri leading seven to three. Hey, look who's coming in the game for Nebraska. Mike Rozier. Oh. -ho -ho. Mike Rozier is coming in. He suffered a hip pointer in the win over Kansas State last week. Tom Osborne did not think he would play here today. He's the nation's number three rusher. He already has 866 yards. He now is in the game as the eye back. Mike Rozier, a junior. 5'11", 210 pounds. Watch him. He's now the eye back. The pitch to Rozier. Here comes Rozier. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of about three on the play and a good defensive play by Jay Wilson, number 34, the Tiger linebacker. Strong safety number 18, Kevin Potter, also came up from his strong safety spot to make a stop. Rozier, Rozier is in this ball game. Psychological edge here. They need him because all of a sudden the momentum has changed in the ball game. Nebraska has time of possession, has held the ball longer than Missouri, but the score, that's the big factor. Rozier inserted into the ball game to try to get a little bit of adrenaline flowing in this Nebraska offense. In the eye on second down and 12, Doug Wilkening is the up back of the eye. He's the fullback. Turner Gill wants to throw. He's hit, but somehow stays on his feet. Turner Gill, he's amazing. Still running 20, 25. Still going to the 30-yard line. He goes to the 30. How he ever got away from Jim Lockett, the nose guard, number 98, I will never know. But he was all the way back to his own 10, and watch this one come. Number 98, the nose guard. Lockett has him dead to rights. 
but number 12, Quick Feet. That's the name of it, Quick Feet, and balance is the only thing that saved Turner Gill. He turns on the speed, he's got 4.7 speed, now he's looking for people up front. Very, very composed, he's a junior. He knows everywhere to go. Very, very controlled fella. Lockett, number 98, trying to make the big play, can't pull it off. Turner Gill now is throwing long downfield, it is incomplete. It was intended for Jamie Williams, the all Big 8 conference tight end. So it'll be second down and 10. Turner Gill was about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. He wound up gaining 10 and getting a first down out just across the 30-yard line. The Tigers scoring drive, it was a good one. They went 65 yards. They had it for 12 plays. It took almost three and a half minutes. And on fourth and one, Brad Perry beautifully passed to his tight end, Andy Gibbler, for the touchdown. And a mix-up on the exchange point. Turner Gill grabbed it, lunged forward, and actually gained a couple of yards on the play. I don't know what he's thinking about right now. You know, you come away from a busted play like that, and then you try to get yourself settled down for a controlled drive. Nebraska is a control team. They're used to things going exactly their way. They're not used to being behind this early in the ball game. The teams that they've had the most trouble against are passing teams, and Missouri certainly is that. Penn State and Colorado were the other two passing teams that they've played so far this season. Wilkening and Rozier, the backs in the eye. Turner Gill stumbling, almost fell down. Now throws, and it is completed to number 89, Mitch Brink. And that will not be quite enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and about a yard to go. And there's a little mix-up of that Nebraska backfield right now. But what a marvelous quarterback Gill is. Marvelous athlete, the fact that he can recover from stumbling and bumbling. But he knows where his receivers are. He has the field of vision, and he spots the receiver, even though it's short of the first down. He's got that ability, that athletic ability to call on at any time. Grant Campbell will punt for Nebraska. He wasn't called on to punt last week, but he can hit him. He has a 43-yard average on 15 punts. The kick is away into the wind, rising high into the air. Fair catch being called at the 22-yard line of Missouri. And the Tigers now leading 7-3, to 9 to play in the first half. We'll take it on the attack, and we'll be back in just a moment. Nearly 3 million fans attended NCAA Division I double. attended NCAA Division I AA football games in 1981. The Division I AA membership has grown to 92 teams for the 1982 season. The division championship will be determined December 18th at Wichita Falls, Texas. Grant Campbell's punt into the wind, still a 40-yard punt with no return. Missouri with a 7-3 lead, nine minutes to go, first half. Another sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Missouri's football. And the handoff will go for the Missouri Tigers to Tracy Mack, number 36, the fullback, a gain of about four to the 25, and Tony Felici, who plays on the defensive terminal along with Doug Herman. Herman playing a defensive tackle, returning to action this week after being hurt last week. I'm going to tell you, Missouri's got a distinct advantage in this drive because they've had the, the, the pass plays working well for them. The run went well on that previous drive. They're, they're all set up for the play action type passes and it's a good opportunity here on second down second down and seven caver the wide receiver tracy mack the fullback across the 35 first down out to the 37 yard line quick hitter and explosive bursting on the part of that fullback tracy mack they can continue to get five yards on the first play See, here the nose guard number 74 here trying to Jeff Merrill trying to get into the play but he gets totally flattened as Mac comes charging through the line of scrimmage if they can get that five yards in that first down it sets up that second second down play it could be a pass or a run that time they went to the run first down from the 38 a penalty flag has been dropped, and Wallace Snowden has been dropped and so that one will not show any profit for the Missouri Tigers by the way Tracy Mack the sophomore fullback out of Rock Hill Missouri now has 28 yards on eight carries Procedure penalty going against Missouri. Tony Polisi comes back in on defense. Missouri leading Nebraska 7-3. Remember, the Tigers came into this game a 24-point underdog against the Cornhuskers, the nation's number one team on offense. 
rushing offense, total offense, scoring offense. Only once this year has Nebraska scored less than 40 points. After the penalty, first down and 15 Missouri. Now back on their own 33-yard line. Brad Perry straightens up and throws. Intercepted by number 10, Brett Clark. Clark of Nebraska passed away down to the 25-yard line. With an off the hands of Caleb, the intended receiver, into the hands of safety, Brett Clark. And the sophomore winds up on the Missouri 25-yard line. And there's the first Tiger turnover. Just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Missouri giving the ball up on turnovers, at least one interception per game. That time, Perry threw the ball behind Gibbler. Couldn't quite reach it. And there was Brett Clark to pick the football off. For Nebraska, Mike Rozier will be the tailback. And Doug Wilkening is a fullback. Roger Craig started, played a series hobbled off the field. Now first down Nebraska on the 25. Turner Gill, the quarterback, being corralled by number 51, Rod Skillman. Skillman, who plays both defensive tackle and then backs up as the nose guard, was certainly right on the spot. Turnover the key there. He came in top of the show talking about the problems that Missouri has had with turnovers, mostly with interceptions. The fact that they've got 17 fumbles lost so far this year, interceptions, they've been averaging one interception per game, and it has been costly for them in the ball games that they've played. Rozier goes out. The sophomore, Jeff Smith, who's averaged over 12 yards per carry, is now the eye back for Tom Osborne's team. Turner Gill is throwing way over the head of his intended receiver, number 29, Todd Brown. So that is incomplete. They tried a little razzle-dazzle that time. I think it was designed to be kind of a stop-and-go type pattern, but the receiver got tangled up with the defender, could not get upfield. Gill just throwing the ball on a spot pattern, trying to find the receiver. He can come through in the clutch, I tell you. This Missouri defense has this huge Nebraska crowd, very quiet at the moment. Over 76,000, 123 consecutive sellouts for the Big Red here at Memorial Stadium. This is third and 10, Nebraska. Turner Gill throwing long for Todd Brown, number 29, incomplete. Oh, it was almost caught by Todd Brown. He did a beautiful job of groping for it. And Jeff Smith, the cornerback, number 23, what a job he pulls off, Tom. I tell you, if Brown had caught the ball in the end zone, they probably would have ruled to the touchdown. He doesn't have very much control here. The ball comes down. I believe he's bobbling the ball, but had he been in the end zone, he may have had it just long enough for them to call it a touchdown. But he caught the ball about a yard and a half shy. You see, about a yard and a half shy of the end zone, and no touchdown on the play. Turner Gill will hold. Kevin Seibel will try it from 43 yards out against the wind. It is on the way, and it may go wide. It is no good. And again, the Tiger defense has had the answer. And Missouri will start, and they'll have good field position. Seven to play of the first half, and Missouri on top seven to three. We're coming right back. Well, if you want scores, if you want late-breaking sports news, if you want the best college football analysis, only ABC Sports makes the pieces fit. So far today, the story has been Missouri quarterback Brad Perry. Ten out of 17, 71 yards and a touchdown. The Tigers first down at their own 25-yard line. Glenn Malvern is in as the tailback. He'll get, no, that was Tracy back, the fullback, number 36. Hit at the 25-yard line, a hard hit by linebacker Steve McWhorter, a senior out of Fairfield, Iowa. Just noticing on that play, the secondary from Nebraska now starting to nose up a little bit, starting to come up a little tighter on the receivers. They've been letting the receivers kind of get in front of them on the past couple of series. Now all of a sudden they're coming in much, much tighter on those wide people. Glenn Malvern and Wallace Snowden are the splitbacks for Missouri. The second down play, and it goes to Malvern, number 32. And again, there's very little to be gained trying to run into those red shirts with a charge on defense led by Toby Williams. Toby, by the way, is the older brother of Jimmy Williams, who was an All-American here at Nebraska last year and was taken in the first round of the program. Oh, Powers may have settled down Perry a little bit too much on the sideline, saying, hey, let's not put it up too much. Maybe a little gun shy because of that interception. Uh, a little while ago on that last particular drive when the ball was tipped by Gibbler. He's got to keep staying on top. That's what got them in the ball game, got them the lead, is going up on top with the pass. Malvern and Snowden are the running backs. This will be Malvern, number 32. Oh, Not enough for a first down. It'll be a punting situation. Over the 30, out to the 32, where middle guard Jeff Merrill out of Huntsville, Alabama, and Doug Herman, a 270-pounder, returning to action this week, makes a tackle. 
And so Missouri will give the ball up. And Marlon Adler, who's been alternating at quarterback with Brad Perry the last few weeks, will be the punter. And Irving Fryer, Fryer of the Flyer, goes back to receive along with Jeff Smith. The kick is with the wind, and it's wobbly and not too high in the air. It does take the right bounce. And this is Irving Fryer, number 27, dancing and looking. And the hole quickly closes, and he's brought to the turf. So now Nebraska, with 5-10 to play in the first half, will have a chance to get it going from their own 24-yard line, and we'll come right back. Now, an unbelievable... So far, the Missouri defense has been so good. Nebraska has rushed for only 104 yards. Missouri with a 7-3 lead. And the Cornhuskers first down on their own 24-yard line. This is Wilkening, the fullback, straight ahead to about the 28-yard line into the arms of linebacker Jay Wilson. And he's Missouri's leading tackler on the year. And he got help from Randy Jostis out of Omaha, Nebraska. Randy must enjoy playing this game coming back to Nebraska. Absolutely. He had a chance to, and rather Nebraska had a chance to recruit him. They tried very desperately to get him, but he said, no, nope. no chance. I'm going to Missouri. Rozier is the eye back. He suffered the hip pointer against the Wildcats last week. The pitch is to Mike Rozier. Rozier trying to drive for a first down. He's very close to it, where he's being corralled. Just maybe a half yard shy. We'll know in a moment. Demetrius Johnson made the stop for the Tigers of Warren Powers. Time remaining in the first half now is 431. Nebraska came into the game with 404 rushing yards per game as they bring the chains in. Number one, number one in total offense, number one in the nation in points scored. So the Missouri Tigers are playing a lot of defense. You know, Mike Rozier is not getting the ball nearly as often as he would get it under normal circumstances. He originally in there for uh, the opportunity to have a psychological advantage as they did pick up the first down on that play. But he is in the ball game just to be there as a threat. Just his presence alone creates problems and havoc for the Missouri defense. They're not sure what's going to happen, so he doesn't need to get the ball but once every three or four times, and he picks up a big yard, big yardage on that last play. Tom Osborne using the wide receivers to bring the plays in. Rozier, Rozier, the eye back, looking like Mike Rozier at 100% health, bringing it all the way to midfield and another first down. A 15-yard gain by Mike Rozier before Bobby Bell can stop him. You don't need to look at the ball at all. Just look at number 30's feet. Just keep watching his feet. Don't look at his upper body. Bounces, jukes outside. Again, same stutter step, then cuts back inside. He has the ability to keep moving his feet and maintaining his balance and looking at a field of vision. Just watching the feed, watch the leg action. He knows where he's going. The defense doesn't seem to know. They're having lots of trouble containing him this afternoon. Rozier has carried only three times for a total of 18 yards. He got 15 on that. This is Mike Rozier. And Rozier will get about three. And it is dumped by Taft Seals and driven backward. Seals, a junior, a 217-pounder out of Kansas City, Missouri. Osborne says that Rozier has the momentum going for him. Two straight 200-plus yard games coming into the ball game. He's on a roll. Having 200 yards a game is some feat to uh, try to master, I tell you. Ernest Anderson of Oklahoma State, the first college back to get to 1,000 yards this year. He's averaging over 200 yards per game. Mike Rozier is number three in the nation. And with a good day here, he would get to 1,000 yards. Remember, they didn't think he was going to play. Turner Gill slowed up but not stopped now taken down on about the 44 yard line by Taft Seals James Luckett and Randy Jostis Texas Tech and Washington a scoreless fourth quarter Washington the number one team in the country number two Pittsburgh ahead of Syracuse well that's a final score Pittsburgh 14 Syracuse nothing tonight Georgia plays at Kentucky SMU leading Texas 7-0 early in the football game. Arkansas routed Houston. This is third down and four. Turner Gill is throwing. Has his receiver wide open. Todd Brown. Brown will be downed on the 30-yard line. It looked for a moment to me, Tom, as though he might make one quick move and be on his way. That time he really takes advantage of the pocket protection that he gets. 
doesn't have much pressure here. He has lots of time. Any receiver in the world can get open. But then, all of a sudden, right in his face is Lockett. And under pressure, a good quarterback comes through. He had to throw the ball sidearm because he couldn't go straight over the top the way he normally would release the ball. He improvises, goes sidearm, and completes the pass to Todd Brown. First down on the Missouri 30. Moravec, who just came in, number 40, came in as the fullback, ramming it straight ahead for about eight yards. Mark Moravec, a senior from David City, Nebraska, a 208-pounder, just came in, and right away, he banged it forward. Turner Gill is the man who is down. You can imagine Cornhusker concern right here. You better believe it. They really can't afford him. Where they've got depth is at running back. As you've noticed, Craig has been in the game, Wilkening in the game, Jeff Smith in the game, Marbeck in the game, and all of a sudden, number 12, Turner Gill, injured on the play, will try to find out exactly what happens to him after he hands the ball off. You see here, he gets a little, a little uh, kiss here from Justice. Randy Justice gives him a little shot after the play is really over. Kind of an unnecessary shot there. Gain of eight by Mark Moravec, who just came in. The attention being given here to quarterback Turner Gill. Turner is four out of ten passing for 42 yards. 34 yards rushing on seven carries, and it looks like that he will go out of the game for a while time. He's walking under his own power, but his feet look a little unsteady. Just a follow through on the play, hands the ball off, but now he's spectating. You've got to follow through as much as you can after the play is over. Quarterback's got to carry out his movement. But really an unnecessary shot there by Joseph, taking Turner Gill out of the ball game, putting a lot of pressure now on Nebraska. Bruce Matheson, a senior quarterback from Superior, Wisconsin, will come in. Bruce has thrown only five passes this year, hit two out of the five. Rozier and Moravec are the running backs. Second and two, the ball down on the Missouri 22, and the Huskers are four points behind. Matheson pitching back to Mike Rozier. Rozier at the 20, Rozier run out of bounds on the 16-yard line. Mike Rozier run out of bounds, and for a moment, it looked like the man who ran him out of bounds passed sales. And Rozier, we're going to have a little get-together. But then it cooled off quickly. He makes number 29, Demetrius Johnson, miss the cornerback. He's got to come up and force the play. He's got to contain. His assignment, keep everything inside. He doesn't do that. He gets juked out by the ball carrier, Rozier, who shows that premier running ability he has. And then he crunches people in the secondary to get ahead for the first down. That's what he's got at the 15-yard line. First down on the 16-yard line. Rozier now has 30 yards and five carries, and the pass is completed at the 10-yard line to the tight end, Jamie Williams, number 80. And this senior is an all-big eight tight end. And now the Cornhuskers in this drive have driven 65 yards. Madison showing a lot of poise on the play. He picked up a safety blitz. Potter was coming in on the safety blitz to try to uh, beat the play and they went to a checkoff. They called the checkoff and audible at the line of scrimmage to Jamie Williams to come up with a quick pop pass over the middle. Ricky Simmons is the wide receiver. Bruce Matheson has taken over for Turner Gill. He is the quarterback. And this is Rozier. Rozier fighting for the five-yard line out on about the seven-yard line. Rozier taken out of bounds on about the seven-yard line. Safety Kevin Potter working with Randy Jostis. Jostis, number 99, and he's having a hand in an awful lot of defensive plays already. I'll tell you, very important that Rozier is in this ball game right now because when Turner Gill is out of the ball game, a very integral part of your offense, and you've got Rozier in the ball game, you need that psychological lift, the fact that you've got a game breaker in the backfield who can do it for you because they can't possibly have as much confidence in Matheson, but he's done a creditable job so far in the past couple of plays. Third down, about a yard to go for the first down. The Huskers trailing 7-3, to three, a little over a minute. Snoop, the more of that number 40, diving, trying to get a first down. Now let's see where they're going to put the football. He was trying to go over the top and get the first and ten. The time remaining is one minute, eight seconds. And there is Turner Gill, a very woozy Turner Gill, across the way with an ice pack on his head, trying to clear up his thoughts. Looks like a concussion. Looks like a potential of a concussion. They're trying to be very cautious, give him the rest of the half, and then all of the half to try to regain uh, whatever consciousness he needs to have, perhaps to come back in the second half. First down, four yards and goal to go. Rozier will be knocked down on the four-yard line. Mike 
Rozier trying to take it in on the first down play. Nose guard James Lockett, a senior from St. Louis, stopped him right there. Check of the clock, 44 seconds to play in the first half, and now Nebraska will summon a timeout. As we look at the clock, 44 seconds to play in the first half. This has been a very long Cornhusker drive. They began back on their own 24-yard line. Again, psychologically, Nebraska's got to be down. The star quarterback on the sidelines, new quarterback Matheson in the ball game, but very important, number 30 is in the ball game, Rozier, and he can break it at any time, up the middle, outside, and Matheson has shown that he can audibleize and go to the correct play. So he's a very heady type quarterback. He can do the job. Coming up at halftime, our fireman's fun flashback will feature a look back five years ago at one of the most famous rivalries of college football. Notre Dame, your old school, Mr. Gatewood, and Southern Cal. You remember those. Yeah, I played in a couple of those. Those Trojans. Not one of my favorite teams. Those have been great football wars, and so has this one, involving Missouri and Nebraska. Today's game is the 76th meeting in the series. Last year, Nebraska scored when Phil Bates went into the end zone with 23 seconds to play, and the Cornhuskers won it 6 to nothing. Osborne's only five and four against Warren Powers, too, in this series. Three of the last four times that they played here at Lincoln, Missouri has come away with the win. So throw all the record books and everything aside when these two teams meet. It's like the Big A championship game right here. Bob Brown and Irving Fryer, both wide receivers far to the left. Matheson is the quarterback. Matheson on the roll. Matheson being pursued. And Matheson being taken down on the seven-yard line by Jay Wilson, number 34, that top-notch linebacker of the Missouri Tigers. Wilson, very, very composed on the play, does not let his uh, overzealous ability want to get to the ballgame. They'll go without a huddle. This is third down. Matheson throws. It's incomplete. It stops the clock. It goes out of bounds. And it'll be fourth down coming up. Fourth down and six yards with 20 seconds left to play in the half. And now Tom Gatewood decision time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to hear. I guess I would want to go for it, but they're going to elect to go for the field goal and play it safe. Very, very surprised here that Osborne, but Osborne goes by the textbook. Very, very conservative and very, very concerned type of a coach. He believes in perfection. He's a perfectionist. Things just aren't working out right now. Turner Gill is out of the game, so Bruce Matheson will hold at the 14-yard line. Kevin Seibel kicking from 24 yards as we watch. It is good. So Kevin Seibel getting his second field goal of the afternoon. The first was 33. This is 24. And he hit it with only 17 seconds left in the first half. A long Nebraska drive. One thing about it, Tom, they drove 76 yards. They would have felt bad going away empty. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, better that you score and have a psychological edge. And the fact that you know that you've got lots of depth to come back at Missouri with in that second half maybe is what Osborne has in the back of his head as he tries to rally his team, get them psyched up for the job that they've got to do. I think the key on that particular drive was a tackle by Jay Wilson, the linebacker on Matheson, who had an opportunity out in the open field. Gill might have been able to juke Wilson and get uh, into the end zone, but Wilson, a junior, lots of uh, tackle experience. He's a number one tackler on the ball club for Missouri, kept his control, kept his balance, and made the open field tackle that was very critical on the drive to make them settle for a field goal rather than getting the six points. Nebraska came very close to killing five full minutes on that drive. There is Turner Gill on his feet now, but I don't know, Tom, you know a lot more about it than I do, but he still looks a little woozy to me. I tell you, the way he's holding himself up, it's almost as if he's favoring a, a, a leg of some kind as opposed to just having a concussion possibility. I don't know. It's being very, very, uh, very, very difficult to see what exactly is bothering him. They are setting up as though there may be an onside kick. Kevin Seibel is addressing the football, boots it straight away. And I believe Missouri will let this one go right into the end zone if it's going to do so. No, he will not do it. And trying to bring the ball back is James Caver. Caver take it out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. Missouri had hoped that ball would go into the end zone, but the ball didn't walk away at all. And neither did Kevin Seibel. As long as they don't think it's a punt, that ball is a live ball, and the red shirts were very aware of it. Caver all of a sudden decided, hey, I better pick this ball up. So when you think of field position, think of the fact that only 15 seconds remain in the first half. 
Missouri leading by 1.7 to 6. The Tigers have the ball on their own seven yard line. The Tiger quarterback is junior letterman Brad Perry from Trenton, Missouri. He has been at the throttle the entire first half. He has played well. Now he just wants to run the clock out. Brad Perry is very happy at this point with the field position Missouri has been straddled with to take this to the dressing room. Now they will start the clock two seconds one second and before a throng of over 76,000 what a first half of football Missouri leading by a point we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from our local stations. Now we are about ready for the second half kickoff. The Cornhuskers apparently will play the second half without their brilliant quarterback Turner Gill. Bruce Matheson who replaced him late in the first half will be at the throttle. Nebraska will receive to start the second half. Number seven Brad Burdett will be kicking off. He is a sophomore and deep to receive the F Irving Fryer Fryer the Flyer. He's 100 percent this week but has not been the last couple of weeks. Jeff Smith is also deep number 28 the sophomore running back with a 12 yard plus rushing average. The crowd 76,400 another sellout at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln and Missouri with a one point lead seven to six. They came into the game a 24 point underdog. Here's the kick by Brad Burdett. It'll go all the way out of the end zone. Irving Fryer makes the catch, and Nebraska now will have a first down on their own at 20 yard line. Now here are the people playing so well on defense for the Missouri Tigers. Bobby Bell is the defensive end at left tackle Randy Jostis number 99. The nose guard is James Lockett number 98 out of St. Louis. The right tackle Rod Skillman number 51 and Ken Judd number 39 a senior out of St. Louis is the other defensive end. Rozier is in as the eye back and Wilkening is the fullback. A first down play from the 20 yard line. Matheson is the quarterback. This is Rozier. Rozier around left end. A first down at the 30. Rozier at the 40. He has driven all the way to midfield. <laughs> Beautiful run, almost 30 yards by Rozier. Now, here are the defensive people of the secondary for Missouri as we check out their faces. Jay Wilson, 34, an outstanding linebacker. The other linebacker is Dave McCubrey. On the corners, Demetrius Johnson from St. Louis, number 29, and young Jeff Smith, number 23. The deep people are Ray Harrison and Kevin Potter. And here's the play. Rozier across midfield. Rozier to the 45, doing it all by himself almost. He ran 30. Now he goes almost 10. So, Tom Gatewood, you pinpointed it exactly right. We have the medical report now on Turner Gill, a slight concussion. They say he will not be back. And Mike Rozier apparently is determined that it will not make any difference as far as Nebraska is concerned in winning the game. Second down, less than a yard to go. In just two plays, he has run the ball some 35 yards. And this time, into the middle, looking for the first down, is the fullback, Doug Wilkening. He'll be stopped by Rod Skillman. If the Brassers can keep running the football the way they are, to really take the pressure off Matheson, because all he'll have to do is hand the football off. If they can establish a running game early, sets up the play-action pass, that also will take the pressure off Matheson. So, so far, the game plan is working very, very well for Osborne. Just do what we do best and roll up the offense. Rozier has averaged almost seven yards a carry. He's doing even better than that here today. Nine carries and 70 yards. First down play, and Matheson, the quarterback, is hanging on to the football, doing well. Now he gets rid of it, he pitches the ball off and throws it away. Looks like he threw that ball ahead in front of Fryer as opposed to behind him. Doesn't look like a lateral to me. It looks like he pushes the ball forward. And they've thrown the flag. Matheson on play action on the option and he is rolling he wants to dump the ball off doesn't have a chance to because Missouri playing very very well on the option defense then he pushes the ball ahead to Fryer the wing back illegal play you're absolutely right Tom it was thrown forward as we watch the referee John McClinic he had the right idea it was just five seconds too late he was trying to option and throw the ball to Fryer but Missouri had it diagnosed to a T and he was not in position to make the play. Loss of down. So it'll be second down, Nebraska. 
On the 38-yard line of Missouri, the Cornhuskers began on their own 20 after the kickoff went out of the end zone. And very quickly, Rozier in two running plays brought it back 35 yards. Now this is second down and eight. This is Mike Rozier, the tailback. And Rozier hit by Taft Sales, number 95. He can't close the field, but Jay Wilson can and does at the 35-yard line. At any time, Missouri and Nebraska play, whether it's Columbia or Lincoln, it's always a physical football game. Hey, a lot of collision up front. In the center of that offensive line for Nebraska, Remington in the center, and uh, Mandelko and Steinkuhler, the three in the tandem on offense. You'll see those are the guys who are trying to clear the way here. A lot of white shirts go down, and the ball carrier going right up that same funnel where those <laughs> white shirts went down. That was the key to getting that three or four yard burst by the ball carrier. Rozier, who has 73 yards on 10 carries so far. Third down and two, Nebraska. Wilkening is the up back. This is Rozier. And Rozier looks like he's got a oh, first down at the 31 yard line, and a penalty flag has been thrown. This may go against the Cornhuskers. Preliminary indication was that it was against Nebraska. And a nullify the first down by Rozier. Tom Osborne was certainly hoping that he would not have to use Mike Rozier here this afternoon, but I'm sure Mike was hoping just exactly the other way, that he would get to play, and he really is playing well. And when you've got two all big eight conference-type players like Remington and Rozier to rely on on that offense, it makes a big, big difference. Bruce Matheson is at quarterback in place of Connor Gill. He is a senior from Superior, Wisconsin, and this is third and long, third down and seven. Matheson dropping straight back. Now throws. Oh, it is incomplete. Incomplete beyond the reach of the intended receiver, Mike Rozier. And now it is fourth down. It's a shame. Matheson really had to rush himself on the play. Excellent penetration by the defensive coverage from Missouri. Really putting the heat on, making him rush his throw because Rozier obviously wide open on that circle route coming out of the backfield. Mike Mandelko will make the long snap. Grant Campbell will punt for the second time, standing back on his own 47-yard line, and the Tigers not dropping a safety back. He hangs it high in the air. Let's see where it lands. On the three-yard line. On the three-yard line. Beautiful high-hanging punt, and what a spot it leaves Missouri in. They still have a one-point lead, and we're coming right back in just a moment. The glory when over 16,000 take to the streets for the New York City Marathon. Exclusive live start to finish coverage tomorrow on ABC. On the last play, it looked like Nebraska was the team that punted the ball. Here it looks like Nebraska is receiving the ball. That's exactly it. Run guard and Moravec, three defenders on the play, stop the ball and bury the ball on the three to two or three yard line of Missouri. Brad Perry wants to throw from the end zone to Mack, his fullback. Five, six, seven, out on the seven-yard line. Brad Perry is a cool customer. Calmly found his fullback, Tracy Mack, coming out of the bull, out of the uh, end zone. And he's out on the seven-yard line. As we check out the Nebraska defensive people, Jeff Merrill plays in the middle on defense. And he is such a good one. Rob Stuckey at right tackle, just a sophomore. And Tony Felici in all big eight is the defensive right end. Now for Missouri, it is second down and five. Number five, Brad Perry, handing the ball off this time to Tracy Mack. Close to a first down, but he will not have it all together. Here are the people on defense of the secondary. Steve Damkroger, what an outstanding linebacker, and still is Steve McWhorter, number 45. Alan Lyday, you saw so much of him in the first half, number 18 on the corner. Dave Burke, number 33 on the other corner. The deep people, the monster is Chris Van Norman, and the safety is Brett Clark. He intercepted a pass. Third down, two yards to go in Missouri. The ball on their own 11-yard line. Eric Green, a first and minute fullback, along with Wallace Snowden, only a sophomore. And this will be Snowden trying for the first down. And that is very, very close. We'll have to see where they spot the football. Seven to six, Missouri. We're early in the third quarter. The Sooners lead Oklahoma State 29 to seven in the fourth quarter. Iowa State and Colorado 14-14, third quarter. It was a first down for Missouri. Tom, they really had to dig that one out. And Snowden's been getting the call on a lot of those short yardage bursts. He's getting three or four yards a pop every time he's had it. He was a workhorse for them in the first half. 
Tracy Mack and Wallace Snowden are the running backs for Warren Powers at the moment. Brad Perry again for Mack coming out of the backfield 15 down on the 16 yard line. Alan Lyde is number 18 but he was the second man there. The first was number 90 Scott Strasberger. Perry has gone back to work with the same type high percentage pass that was successful for him in the first half. First half he was 10 for 16 about 63 64 percent passing. Didn't have a lot of yardage only about 74 75 yards but he made the critical play to keep drives alive and press to get in a good position on second down. Brad Perry now 12 out of 18 for 78 yards. Caver is his wide receiver and the running back will be Wallace Snowden number 40. What a hit that was by linebacker Steve Dam Kroger of the Nebraska Cornhuskers the senior number 35 out of Lincoln Nebraska. He can really put a hit on somebody. Oh yeah he came into the game with about 35 hits. He's had about uh, seven or eight so far in this ball game. He's playing a great game. Third down five here for Missouri still deep in their own territory down their eight own 18 yard line Mack and Snowden are the running backs. Brad Perry yelling out to Caver his wide receiver. Missouri does have the following wind in this quarter. He's throwing a little bit longer Caver who came back over the middle makes the grab first down out over the 30 to the 33 yard line. James Caver the senior flanker from Waynesville Missouri and that connection was a beauty Brett Clark makes the tackle he's a number two receiver for Missouri he can go on top when he catches the ball is usually 18 to 20 yards deep just runs an in route here and takes advantage of the secondary that's playing eight to ten yards off of him they're giving him lots of room to cut underneath that's the type of play that will be successful all afternoon Gibbler and Caver are both wide at a quick toss that is good to Caver number 82. Boy, he can catch a football high in the air, picking it out down on about the 44 yard line. And again, Brett Clark was there along with Neil Harris. Harris number 11 backs up both of the corners for Nebraska. Caver goes into traffic and holds up pretty well. His frame is only 177 pounds at 5'11", but he catches it like a big, big man. Herb Husker, they call him. Right now, Herb is trailing by 1.7 to 6, 9.34 to play third quarter. Remember, Missouri got the football on their own three-yard line. They now are out on their own 45-yard line where they have a first down. And the running back is Wallace Snowden, number 40, the sophomore from Hot Springs, Arkansas, tackled by Steve McWhorter and his linebacking mate, Steve Damkroger. Missouri defenders are going to have to come up and be a little bit more Take a little bit more of a risk, I believe. The wide people are coming underneath. That's all they're running is underneath routes because there's lots of room in front. They're going to have to come up and challenge. Nebraska hasn't had a challenge. Colorado threw 50 passes against them two weeks ago, threw a lot of yardage, but they only scored 14 points against Nebraska. But here is Brad Perry knocking on the door again. Perry with a straight drop. He's four for four. In this and the pitch is on. Tony Felici just came in the game replacing Scott Strasberger. Felici came in, was told to go, and go he did. And he catches Brad Perry and throws him for a sack back on the 40-yard line. Tony Felici, a senior out of Omaha. He had a great game against Florida State a year ago. Nebraska hasn't shown the blitz too much this afternoon. But here he comes, the number two tackler, Tony Felici, number 46. That's his second sack of the season. Big play. Just sheds a blocker. Just comes right off the blocker, Andy Eakern, and makes the tackle. Third and 15, Brad Perry throwing over the head of Caver. It is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Intended for Caver, James Caver, the senior flanker back. But that was badly overthrown. And as a fact, Brett Clark was the nearest to it. When Clark made an interception earlier, it came off of the deflection. Clark has the ability to be in the right place that time. Perry just trying to force the ball in and running exactly the same play that they've been successful on in the same drive. He's got to go to a little bit more diverse type play action. Marlon Adler, who has not worked it down as the offensive quarterback today, Perry has gone all the way. A very talented punter. Here's the punt on fourth down. Not high. He needs a good bounce. Irving Fryer is number 27. And what's it going to do? Oh, out of bounds on the three-yard line. Well, a little while ago, Missouri started on the three. Now Nebraska will start on the three. 7.51 to play in the third. We'll be right back. We are 
USA One. Taking charge with a ship. Nebraska first down on their own four yard line. Bruce Matheson is the quarterback. Rozier is the eye back and Doug Wilkening is the fullback in the eye. From their own four, Wilkening, the fullback fumble. Missouri has the football. It was recovered by number 18, Kellen Potter, the strong safety. And Missouri has first down and goal to go on the five yard line. Somebody in there reaching in to strip this ball, trying to pick it up. I believe it was Robert Curry, number 66, the tackle, who went in there and stripped the ball loose. Just a matter of here, down in your own territory, you gotta first hold on to the ball, be conservative, don't pump the arms, protect the football. He gets stripped by number 66, Robert Curry, the junior tackle. Missouri got the ball. First down and five for Missouri. They have a one-point lead, seven to six. Snowden is the tailback. Very little. And he will lose about a yard and a half as Rob Stuckey, number 75, the defensive tackle and Tony Polisi, get to him quickly. And it'll be second down. Missouri has moved more efficiently through the air than they have on the ground. Brad Perry having an excellent day. Perry, 14 out of 23 for 104 yards. And when Missouri scored in the second quarter, Perry passed for the touchdown, hitting Andy Gibbon. Caver is his wide receiver on second down and six. Mack and Snowden are the running backs. Perry wanting to throw. Now throws, batted away, and almost intercepted. Number 38, Chris Van Norman, the monster back. Batted that away, and it's third down. You know, that play would have been more effective if Perry was a very mobile quarterback. If he would run as if to throw, run the option and throw, he has two dimensions rather than one. That particular time, a real soft rollout stop and kind of a pocket pass, really the advantage is to the defense because there's not as much pressure or leverage on them. There's a look at the turnovers. The Huskers have turned it over twice. And Missouri turned it over once. That was an interception. This is the third down play. Six to go, Brad Perry. Now we'll throw, and it is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Incomplete. That was broken up at the four-yard line by Neil Harris, the cornerback. And now Brad Burdett, a sophomore from Monroe City, Missouri, will be coming on to try the field goal. Bobby Bell will be the long snapper. That is also crucial. Harris a hero on that play. He lost his starting job coming into this ballgame. Last week he was a starter. Lost his starting job to Dave Burke, number 33. In that particular case, obviously he's got a little bit of experience and he's happy to be in the ballgame because he comes up with a big play to knock the ball down. Brad Perry will hold at the 13. The kick by Burton is on the way. It is good. A 23-yard field goal by Brad Burton. And the Tigers do not come away empty. Now 6.56 to play in the third quarter and it's Missouri 10 the Cornhusker six, and we'll come back with a kickoff. Space at Morty, your home. In the background, we look at the Golden Dome, marking the Capitol building, and this is the capital city of Lincoln, Nebraska. A lot of bright sunshine today, a beautiful October afternoon, and a football game that has over 76,000, very quiet at the moment. The Tigers, a 24-point underdog, have a four-point lead, and we're midway in the third quarter. Brad Burdett will be kicking off for the Missouri Tigers, and Irving Fryer and Jeff Spieth will be on the receiving end. It is headed toward Irving Fryer, and he's going to run with it. Fryer at the 10, 15, oh, he can fly. Fryer, the flyer at the 35, 40. Can he go 100 yards? No, he goes 55 yards from the end zone out to the 43, make it some 57 yards, where he's tackled by special teams expert Duncan Hoffman. Hoffman saved the touchdown. The mark of a championship-type team are game breakers, and Fryer certainly is one of them. Rozier being another, he just follows the wedge, and then he's on his own. You see, not that many blocks thrown by those wedge people up front. They're just positioned in people's way, then he's on the way to the races. Fryer now looking for something downfield just to try to get as much as he can. He's a game breaker. Rozier, a game breaker. They've got lots of them, and they haven't given up. He was shaken up a bit after the 57-yard return and goes out. 
Mark Shaleen, number 25, is in at fullback. And Rozier is the ball carrier. Rozier and at about the 41-yard line, a short gain. Rod Skillman, number 51, a senior out of Dalton, Missouri, makes the tackle. And there's the story on the drive. It came quickly after the fumble recovery, the fumble by Doug Wilkening. Recovered by Missouri. They couldn't take it in the end zone. They kicked the 23-yard field goal, and the Tigers have a four-point lead. Ricky Simmons in as a wide receiver. Dan Hill comes in as the tight end. Rozier now with 77 yards, and this is second down at eight. Matheson spins to Rozier. Rozier still behind the line, and he's going to be hit across the 40 and down on the 39 by Jay Wilson, the linebacker for Missouri. Shadow Rozier, you see what kind of exceptional hands he has in concentration. He makes a fingertip shoe type grab on the play just to keep the ball in play, and then he makes an excellent grab, uh, a run rather, upfield to pick up yardage across the line of scrimmage. But just excellent hands and concentration kept the ball in the possession of Nebraska. If you joined us late, Nebraska lost Turner Gill to a slight concussion late in the second quarter. He will not play anymore this afternoon. Swanson goes in motion. Matheson throws for Todd Brown, number 29. That is incomplete. It is incomplete. And again, the Tiger defense causing the Cornhuskers to turn it over. Grant Campbell, number 24, comes on to do the punting, and he's having a very good day punting. He got a week off last week in the big win over Kansas State. Did not have to punt the football. <laughs> James Caver will go deep as a single safety. The long snap is a good one, and a high hanging kick. He can already hang it up in the air. Nebraska will cover it, but it goes into the end zone. Oh, they, they let it get away, and it goes into the end zone. 5-19 to play in the third quarter, and Missouri up by four points. We'll be back in just a moment. Tonight you're still a bachelor. Tomorrow's almost here. So I'm Gator. When we've talked a lot about Roger Craig and Turner Gill being lost for the Cornhuskers, but don't forget that the freshman running back, Santillo Barbosa, has not played since about the first three minutes of the game, and he has an ankle wrapped down on the sidelines. Missouri, first down from their 20. As we look at Wallace Snowden, the sophomore running back, he'll cross for about three, where he's hit by Neil Harris, who's playing a lot of cornerback in the last 10 minutes. Again, Harris back in the ballgame. Lost his starting assignment. He's back in. Maybe that little respite on the sidelines for a while is what Osborne had in mind to get a little motivation, get a little hunger on the part of their cornerbacks. They've not been forcing very well so far this season. He's been forcing well here in the third quarter. Missouri offensive line led by the center, Phil Greenfield, coming up over the ball. And the second down play, Brad Perry. Oh, it is almost intercepted again by Neil Harris, number 11, the cornerback. He came close to picking that one off. I will say, if he had made the catch, it certainly would have been spectacular. He sure did. He looked like the receiver on the play. He's just in the right place. He's dropping off and just looking to pick up some kind of a lane. See that Perry really doesn't have anybody open. He tries to force it in here, and number 11 comes into your screen, comes off of his assignment, the running back, who is running a little bit of a flare, and makes the play. Wayne Davis will come out as a tight end, and Andy Gibbler is in. This is third down and six Missouri from their own 23, and Brad Perry. Penalty flags are down. It is broken up, intended for Andy Gibbler, number 83. The flags were thrown in the backfield on the third down and sixth play that was policed on defense by Brett Clark. I tell you, we talked about Nebraska being weak in the secondary. Three straight plays in a row. One a forced play, one a batted down pass, and their excellent coverage by Brett Clark, the free safety. They look like a very, very seasoned and well-drilled secondary. They came up with big plays. They'll talk with Steve Damkruber, the holding penalty going against Missouri. We'll check the referee, John McClinic. And the penalty will be declined, and now Missouri will have to turn the ball over. Get a chance to look at the, see where the play is. The center on the play, number 53, Greenfield, is the one who is the guilty of the holding penalty. Just kind of reaching in, trying to get that extra bit of protection for Brad Perry. On fourth down, the punt by Marlon Adler. Well hit. Jeff Smith is waiting from his 27-yard line. Across the 40, midfield, following his blocking to the 40, and down 
down to the 36-yard line of Missouri. And the return game of the Nebraska Cornhuskers keeping them right in the football game. It's been a big offensive weapon for us. Chris Erickson made the tackle. But these Nebraska return people, Irving Fryer and Jeff Smith, are really something to watch. Well, tomorrow, the New York City Marathon, 10.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 Central Time. Tom Gatewood, I'm surprised you're not running in that. You're still in great shape. <laughs> I'd like to be in it. Such an exciting event. You'll see it on ABC tomorrow. They'll be running around the five boroughs of New York. It'll take them something over two hours to cover 26 miles plus, plus about 287 yards, I guess, Tom. A few calories you're going to burn to do that, too. A lot of pasta eating the night before. Lots of people trying to get that energy food down. So it's amazing to watch those 16,000 people going across the George Washington Bridge. And don't forget Howard Cosell Sports Beat. And we'll be well informed and brought up to date on the latest happenings in the negotiations in the National Football League strike. They've had lots of inspirational play by the special teams by Nebraska, but oh, the loss of Turner Gill so far has been a very, very dramatic happening here in this ballgame. And Missouri just lost Dwayne Davis. Nebraska now, this is Mike Rozier getting into the secondary to the 30 and down to the 29-yard line. Almost like that Rozier made one cut too many. He started to go to the inside. I think if he would have stayed inside, he might be still running. He decided to dip outside and lost his footing on the turf. You'll see he starts outside, then he comes inside on a cutback. Stay inside, because there's a lane there. At the last minute, he tried to make a cut to the outside and lost his footing. Rozier is closing in on a 100-yard day right now, even though he didn't play early in the football game. He has 87. And setting up the throw is Matheson. He throws incomplete at the 11-yard line. Todd Brown, number 29, of Nebraska, was the intended receiver. And right there was Jeff Smith. Try to find out where Rozier is on the play. Number 30, lined up in the eye formation. Takes the fake as if he's got the ball. And he gets a little shot here from Justice. Not Justice, number 98, rather. Oh, the play, thought it was Justice, not Justice. Just lock it. Third and two play, Jeff Smith at the, the eye back. More than a first down, all the way down to the 15-yard line of Missouri. Sophomore eye back, Jeff Smith, running for about 15 and down to the 15. Jeff Smith, the cornerback, there are two Jeff Smiths. One who carried and one who tackled. Here they go. Whole left side of the line performs well and buries the right side of the line for Missouri as Smith picks up a big gain. They're pointing out Missouri, lots of different tactics trying to stop Nebraska, and some of the tactics kind of dirty. As we got a shot of Lockett, a little extracurricular activity on number 30, Rozier. First down on the 16. The pitch to Smith, the tailback, nothing this time. Taking a yard behind the line by Rod Skillman. Skillman, number 51, playing the middle guard for just that play. It's second down at 11, and we pause for station identification. This is 7 TV, KETV in Omaha. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is 7 TV, KETV in Omaha. Jeff Smith has now carried for 53 yards. Rozier is back as the eye back now, and Shalina's is the fullback, and a quick toss incomplete for Jamie Williams, number 80, the Cornhusker tight end. Matheson showing the same kind of improvisation that Turner Gill possesses. He threw a sidearm as he was coming down to the ground, trying to loop it around the defenders coming in, trying to get the ball to Jamie Williams. Unsuccessful on that particular play. But again, Missouri is playing a very spirited defensive game, playing very well, exceptional plays. Why they have to go to some of the, the dirty tactics that they've been using, very, very surprising to me because they're playing an exceptional defensive ball game. Bruce Matheson as a passer, 0 for 4. This is third down and 11. Matheson just lobbing it for Todd Brown, incomplete. That was out of bounds. So was Todd Brown, and now it is fourth down. It is 10 to 6, Missouri. 2.35 to play in the third quarter, and a penalty flag has been thrown. So hold everything until we check it out with the referee. John McClinic will tell us. I think there was motion. The right side of the line looked like it left a little early for Nebraska. 
I can recall the play. I think the right side moved a little ahead of the count. Probably an offside call. Are you surprised they're taking the penalty? On the offense, North Here's a little surprising. I think they would go the other way. Now it'll be third down and 16 for Nebraska. Had Missouri refused the penalty, it would have been fourth down. Nebraska probably would have gone for the field goal. But now it's third and 16 on the Tiger 22-yard line. Ricky Simmons will go as a wide receiver to the left. Mark Shaleen and Mike Rozier are the running backs for Nebraska. Matheson is the quarterback. Matheson to Rozier. Rozier at the 15 down on the 12-yard line. And that was a nifty tackle by Bobby Bell, number 96. Also a checkoff call. He realizes that they're coming on him, that they're, they're closing in fast. They had a blitz on, a red dog was on, and he decided to go with the dump pass because number 34, Jay Wilson, was dogging on the play. We'll have a field goal. Pardon me, Tom. We'll have a field goal attempt coming up now by Kevin Seibel. The ball will be placed on the 19, a 29-yard field goal attempt. Mike Mandelko will make the long snap. Bruce Matheson, the quarterback, will hold. Here is a 29-yard field goal attempt. Seibel will hit it. The kick is on the way, and we're waiting. It is good. Seibel has hit his third field goal of the afternoon. It comes very late in the third quarter. And this one is of 29 yards by Kevin Seibel. And now we have a one-point game. Missouri leading by 1.10 to 9, 150 to play in the third quarter. And let's go to New York now and get an update on the Ohio State game. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers get a 29-yard field goal, third field goal today by Kevin Seibel. He was three for four on the year coming into this game today. Now he's three for three today as we look at Kevin. He will be kicking off. And deep to receive will be James Caver and Rick Doby for Missouri. That was a 29-yard field goal. Nebraska had the ball for eight plays. They got into scoring position on a beautiful return by Jeff Smith. And the Nebraska kick return game has really been outstanding, particularly in the second half. One minute 50 to play in the third quarter. Seibel will hit it. And he hits it well. James Caver will stay right there. So Caver says we'll take it on the 20. So far, Missouri has done exactly what they've had to do in the ball game, not turn the football over, not fumble it as often as they have been, having turned the ball over to their opponents about three times per game so far this season. They have not had that type of turnover situation, and they've gone to the air. They've gone with their strength, throwing the football. They've got to continue to do that. The wind is at their back. Next week, Missouri will go to Stillwater to play Oklahoma State and the nation's leading rusher, Ernest Anderson, while the Cornhuskers will go to Lawrence to play the Kansas Jayhawkers. Snowden and Mack are the running backs. First down, Missouri play. Wallace Snowden is the ball carrier. He'll get about three as he tries to counter. And he's hit by Steve Damkruber, the linebacker, and defensive tackle Doug Herman. There's the scoring drive. 42 yards, eight plays. The 29-yard field goal by Kevin Seibel. And we have a 10-9 game. 24-point underdog, Missouri. A one-point lead as we near the end of the third quarter. Brad Perry has quarterbacked all the way for Missouri. He has thrown the game's only touchdown pass. On second and six, Perry running the option play. Not a first down. Stopped about two yards shy by Bill Weber, the defensive left end, and again, Steve Damkroger. It will not be easy here this afternoon, Tom Gatewood, when it comes time to choose the outstanding or most valuable players in the game for the Chevrolet Award. You're right, there have been a lot of exceptional and exciting plays, both on the special teams and on the regular offenses and defenses. It's gonna be very tough. Nebraska playing the second half without Turner Gill and Roger Craig. Missouri playing almost the entire game without San Pio Barbosa, the exciting freshman running back. Third down and two. Mack trying for a first down. I believe he got it. Tracy Mack, the leading rusher for the Missouri Tigers, came into this game with 327 yards, and on a crucial carry, he may have it. 
Just following the right side of his line, right tackle Conrad Good, number 76, and 67, Bernard Laster. Right, power open. block the way. way go, There's some lane go, to let him pick a way to go, right side or left side. Tracy Mack, 35 yards and 11 carries. Wallace Snowden, 30 yards and 9 carries. This game must be starting to remind Cornhusker fans and Tiger fans of the game a year ago. It's a rock rip defensive battle. Tracy Mack, very little, very little, if any. Stopped by Doug Herman, Steve Dam Kroger, and some of the other Nebraska Cornhuskers. We are down to the end of the third quarter. And so, after 45 minutes of football action, the third quarter is over. NCAA College Football, Missouri at Nebraska, will continue after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. Burlington Fabrics weave their way. Tom Gatewood here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. We start the fourth quarter. It is 10 to 9, Missouri. And we mentioned earlier that Missouri's Santillo Barbosa was lost at about the third play of the game. He's been icing an ankle. First play of the final quarter, a long pass downfield. Oh, what a catch by Caver. What a catch by James Caver, number 82, on the 38-yard line of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tackled immediately by Neil Harris. What a replay to watch. Brad Perry defying the weather. He's throwing into the wind and spots Caver down on a, an out route. And he stays with the ball all the way as the defender, Harris, doesn't see the ball. Doesn't even know that the ball is in the air. His back's to the ball. He's in good position, but he doesn't know that the ball is in the air as Caver makes a good catch. And a 30-yard pickup for Missouri. First down now on the Cornhusker 38-yard line. Brad Perry. The pitch this time will be to Eric Green, the freshman fullback, who had rushed for 122 yards coming into the game. Middle guard Jeff Merrill will stop the play for a very short game. And Tom Gatewood, this is the fourth and final quarter. Missouri leading by one point. Nebraska, however, in the final quarter has the following win. They do, but again, Perry just showed that the wind isn't a factor as far as he's concerned, but it was helped by the fact that Harris didn't know that the ball was in the air, and that vertical jumping ability of Caver really came in because he just jumped over the top of Harris. Caver again streaking down the sideline. Perry is hit from behind and sacked for a loss. Back on the 43 by Tony Felici, the all Big 8 Conference defensive end. Felici caught him from the blind side. He never knew he was coming. That's two sacks in this half for Felici. Two big plays on Perry. Very, very important in this drive. They've got to try to stop them. Try to neutralize. It sets up a third down and long situation for Perry. Going wide for Missouri, Craig White and James Caver. Third down and 15. On the 43 of Nebraska, Brad Perry setting up and throwing. And it's intercepted by number 33, Dave Burke. Burke is still with the football. He fumbles. This is picked up by Missouri. Missouri has the football on the 42-yard line. Talk about big plays. The man ultimately winding up with the football will be James Dempsey, I believe. Burke gets an opportunity to start a game. Number 33, replacing Harris, comes through with a big play, big interception on a tip pass. That's been the problem for Perry this afternoon, interceptions off of tips. And then Dempsey, number 61, the offensive guard, picks up the ball to maintain possession for Missouri. So Missouri, two fumbles on one play. They have the ball first and 10 on the 46-yard line of Nebraska. Brad Perry calling Green, the freshman fullback, through the middle. He'll get about two racked up by Steve Damkroger, the Cornhusker linebacker. Nebraska, number five of the nation. 2-0 and in the Big 8, 5-1 and one on the year, number one in rushing, total offense, number one in scoring. They've been getting 43 points a game. They have nine so far today, Tom. Talk about being, having to make an adjustment, though. Dempsey starts out as an offensive guard. When the interception is made, then you're a defensive player. you got to come up to make tackles. And then when the ball is thrown loose, all of a sudden, he's back as a Dempsey. He's back as an offensive player trying to advance the football. So in a matter of three or four seconds, having to change your defensive position. To a sophomore halfback, Wallace Snowden coming out of the backfield. He gathers the aerial in, and it'll come close to a first down. He may be a little short. He was hit by the monster back, Chris Van Norman, and again by Steve Damkroger. Total yards in the game, Nebraska 288. They've been getting over 500. And Missouri 211. It is 10 to 9, Missouri. And the time remaining is 12 minutes 
and 20 seconds. This will be third down and a yard to go. Both of these coaches so highly successful. Both have such good football programs. Warren Powers, who played at Nebraska, coached at Nebraska, played so well in the pros. Now the head coach at Missouri, his fifth year. The handoff will go to Eric Green as he was trying for the first down, and he got it, and the drive stays alive. It was Tracy Mack. Beg your pardon. Each time they've had a third and short situation, they've gone to the right side and looked to Conrad Good, number 76, and Bernard Laster, 67, the left, I mean, the right guard and the right tackle. They've provided that punch that has given that necessary room up front for the ball carriers to carry it through. That time, Mack made the play. Snowden and Green are the running backs. First down, Missouri on the 36. Brad Perry keeping the football, now being smothered for a loss of about a yard. Number 97 is Toby Williams, the defensive left tackle. He is a good one. So Toby had the answer to the play. Brad Perry on the day, 16 out of 30, better than 50 percent for 138 yards. Sophomore Tracy Mack, Missouri's leading rusher on the year, now has 38 yards on 13 carries. Interesting thing, I believe, Tom, is that possession time must be just about even right now for the entire game. I would think it would be. It's surprising because Nebraska is such a ball-controlled offense. Second down, 13. Brad Perry will throw, and it is gathered in to Eric Green, the freshman fullback, down across the 25. That'll be close to a first down. We'll see where they put it. Eric Green coming out of the backfield and gathering in the pass. The odd thing on the play, Drain catches the ball the way you're not supposed to catch it. He has his hands turned around the wrong way, not the way that they teach it, but it's effective because he holds on to it and he knows where the chains are trying to get that first down. So the coaches in a clinic may say, hey, son, you don't catch it that way. <laughs> but I tell you, when you look at the stats at the end of the game, a catch is a catch, no matter how you did it. it might not look pretty as they measure to try to see if Drain was successful in getting the first down. Yeah. He has it. So it's a first down for Missouri. Now remember, the Tigers are traveling against the wind. However, Tom, I don't believe the wind is quite as strong, quite as much of a factor now late in the afternoon as it was when we kicked the game off. It really has died down because Perry is getting a lot of snap on that ball, a lot of zip throwing it into the wind. So I don't think it is as much of a factor. I think you're right, Bob. First down, Missouri on the Cornhusker 23-yard line. Running play to Tracy Mack. Very little, virtually nothing. The charge led by number 33, Dave Burke. Dave Burke, Toby Williams. And Brent Evans, number 48. Number 61, James Dempsey, the lead guard on the play, was stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. And it, it caused Drain, I mean, uh, Mack to have to change his pattern. You see, number 61 is right there, and Mack had to jump over him. He was stuffed at the line of scrimmage, pushed back by the Nebraska Corn Huskers, and made Mack have to go another way. Without Santillo Barbosa, Warren Powers has been using a lot of his running backs. Key play here, Brad Perry cannot shake away, and will take a sack back on the 35-yard line. Number 74, Jeff Merrill, the middle guard, was the first to be there, quickly to be joined by Toby Williams, number 97. I'd be curious where the center was, number 53, Phil Greenfield, on the play, because Merrill came through so quickly from his nose guard spot. You wonder what happened to the center on the play. Substitute, Tony, Bar Tony Brun was the, was the second string center on the play. He looked like he missed his assignment, and Merrill took advantage of it. Backing the quarterback, Curry, on the play. So maybe just inexperienced at the center spot. Oregon leading Notre Dame 13 to 10 in the fourth quarter. That's a shocker. Tim Holbrook is in as a nickel back on the long pass downfield. Caver has his hands on it, but can't quite hold it. James Caver streaking the sideline, reaching high into the air. He almost had it. Curry shows great touch on the play. This is the kind you just got to have a real soft pass. Just kind of let it glide into the receiver. And Caver almost makes the over the shoulder catch. Just about six or seven inches too long for him to make the catch. Over the shoulder, the toughest catch to make. Great touch on the play by Perry. So the wind cannot be a factor here. No flutter on that ball at all. Just a dead spiral. 
Brad Perry has paid the price. A long field goal try coming up by Brad Burdett from 52 yards out. It's on the way. Will it do it? They are waiting. It is good. Into the wind. A 52-yard field goal by Brad Burdett. And now Missouri moves out to a 13-9 lead. 9.07 left to play in a very exciting football game. Back for the kickoff at the moment. Today, America. Kicker Brad Burdett aiming for the uprights. Let's see if he's got any emotion. You think he does? Think he knows it's good? He's, he's, he's charged up. They now forced Nebraska into a situation where they've got to get a touchdown to win, not field goal. Field goal doesn't do him any good. Puts the pressure on, and he knew it. Number seven, Brad Burdett. Now Tom Brad Burdett will be kicking off. Going deep to receive, number seven is Ricky Simmons. Jeff Smith is 28. The Cornhusker kick return game can be absolutely electrifying. It has been here today. And the kick is sailing toward Jeff Smith, but it will be short. Smith grabs it at the 15. 20 and into traffic at the 20 yard line down at about the 21 yard line nine minutes three seconds remaining and now Missouri hoping to spring one of major upset they came into the game a 24 point underdog the scoring drive a 52 yard field goal into a rather slight win now there was a time when it was a strong win Now the Cornhuskers first down on their own 21. Rozier and Shaleen are the running backs. Rozier is the tailback. This is Rozier. Oh, look at Rozier across the 30. 35 hit from behind. Down at about the 38 by Cap Sales. Sales number 95 out of Kansas City. A gainer, and let's go quickly down to New York. In Austin, Texas, Texas got a field goal to tie the game at 10-10, but now SMU has struck back with a piece of good fortune. Lance McElhinney rolled left, threw the ball right into the hands of a Texas defensive back who allowed it to bounce into the hands of Bobby Leach. Leach gets credit for the 79-yard touchdown catch, which has untied the game and put fourth-ranked SMU back on top, 17-10. Nebraska, a first down play from the Aaron. Junior fullback Mark Shaleen for a short gain. Mike Rozier now, Tom, is over 100 yards. 14 carries, 101 yards. We didn't see him in the first quarter. Not until the Cornhuskers were in trouble did they make their move. He's had a good day. And that's a player who didn't practice all week long, not till Thursday, because of a hip pointer. And he's just uh, been phenomenal. You would think that uh, he was totally healthy and 100%. Nebraska without Turner Gill, Brad Matheson, Bruce Matheson, a veteran quarterback, giving to Rozier. Rozier, not a first down, stopped at about the 44-yard line. Tripped up by Randy Jostis, number 99, the senior defensive tackle from Omaha, Nebraska. Having had a couple of hit pointers myself, I know how painful an injury that can be. Painful with contact from other tackers, but just running and walking is a lot of pain. So number 30 is to be commended because I know he's being, he has to play with a lot of pain. He's heavily bandaged and taped up in order to handle that kind of a situation. Chris Matheson, the Nebraska quarterback, wants a timeout. He wants to go to talk with Tom Osborne. So with a timeout on the field, seven and a half minutes left in the game, we'll be coming right back. Last quarter at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Missouri leading by four, third down and four in Nebraska. Their own, a 44-yard line. Matheson dropping the throw, does it well. The number 27, Irving Fryer. Fryer nailed immediately, but it is a first down up at midfield. Had a good hard hit by Demetrius Johnson, but a gambling and a successful third down play pulled off nicely by Bruce Matheson. Fryer has taken a couple Hard shots this afternoon. One made him leave the football game, but he comes through, and every time it's some kind of a slant or some kind of an in move, but he's a very, very gutsy player. A lot of speed, a lot of respect, and he holds on to the football. Nebraska began the drive with their own 21. Now they are at midfield. They have a first and 10. Bruce Matheson is the quarterback. Setting up. Lobs it to Rozier. Rozier trying to go one-on-one -on -one is working against the sideline and also working against Jay Wilson. That's more than he can handle. And he's taken out of bounds, but a, it will be a gain on the play of about five. 
Rozier running a very controlled route, able to maintain his balance and momentum and stay in bounds. This kind of a play could take you out of bounds, but he gains his, gathers his feet and gets upfield for three or four more yards. Shows you the experience running of Rozier. Second down and six for Nebraska. They are now in Tiger territory on the Missouri 46-yard line. They attack from the eye. Matheson keeps it. And then a sit by number 34, J. Wilson. Wilson leading Missouri and tackling throughout the year. A sure-handed tackler back from the line along with Dave McCubrey. Now third down, Nebraska. Three to go. Time remaining, 645. The Tigers 13 and the Cornhuskers 9. In Big 8 play, Missouri has played 2 and tied 2. In Big 8 play, the Cornhuskers are 2-0. and oh. And this is 3rd and 4. Matheson to Rozier. Here comes Rozier, and he'll get a first down. Rozier makes the first down across the 40 to the 38-yard line of Missouri, where Bobby Bell makes the tackle. But on a key third down conversion, again, Mike Rozier is the man who can do it. Rozier gets a big round of applause as he made a lot on that play on his own. Bobby Bell made the saving tackle, but it was all Rozier. Didn't have much blocking up front, made some people miss, and dragged Bobby Bell for another yard, yard and a half. Now, first down. Mark Shaleen is the fullback. Rozier is the eye back to Rozier behind the line of scrimmage. Now Rozier is on his own, out of bounds across the 30 at the 28-yard line. About eight yards gained on the play. On the pass, thrown to Rozier in the backfield. They turn him loose. A lot of late hitting again by Missouri. Rozier way out of bounds and gets hit. It's effective because Matheson gets rid of the ball at the last possible minute. Last possible minute, lets the ball go. Gives Rozier lots of room. Matheson really slammed on the play. But then, as Rozier goes out of bounds here, he gets a little extra push, and it gets entangled in a lot of equipment on the sideline. Could have been injured. Missouri, again, hitting after the whistle. Now watch the chain being stretched out. It is a first down. They made exactly 10 yards on the play. So, Rozier, with Turner Gill and Roger Craig, both on the sidelines, playing a very strong game for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We are now getting late into the game. 5.54 remaining. Rozier, 16 carries, 111 yards. Three catches for 22 more. And this is a first and 10 Nebraska. Todd Brown is the wide receiver. Bruce Matheson doing a good job running the Nebraska offense. Rozier, but he threw the middle wide open. Rozier headed for the end zone. Rozier is hit, and he's right at the goal line. He did not go in. He's inches from the goal line. Rozier inches from the goal line as he cuts back up a wide open middle. David Remington, Dean Steinkiller, and Harry Preminger opened the widest hole you'll ever see. You'll have to watch Rozier's left foot. He'll make a plant with his left foot and then make a tremendous cut back to the right, right there. He sees that open lane. No blocking on the play to the right side, but the instincts of a great runner is to run against the grain. He made that plant of his left foot, and from that get-go, he was gone. 17 yards rushing, 117 rushes for 138 yards. Quarterback stake, and going, trying for the touchdown is Bruce Matheson. We'll watch the officials. Cutting against the grain. Mark of a great running back. He had nothing there to the left side. Play designed to go to the left. They tried a trap to the left side. Nothing there. Made the flat with the left foot. And off to the races to the right side, cutting back Mike Rozier. After that 27-yard run, Rozier is up to 138 yards. This is second down. Ricky Simmons will bring the play in from Warren Powers. Second down, less than a yard and goal. Five minutes left in the football game. Mark Shaleen is the up back of the eye. Rozier is the tailback. Matheson waiting. And Matheson again trying to crawl over. The flags have been thrown, and somebody made a quick move. So we'll watch the referee, John McClinic. Against Missouri. Well, they can't move it very far, can they? Sure can. Yeah. Play would have been a little bit more effective had Matheson taken a 
a drop step back a little bit to try to get a little momentum to push him into the end zone. He tried kind of like to tiptoe into the end zone, and there was no momentum on his body to get across the line. Everybody was stuffed at the line of scrimmage. You take a little bit of a stutter step back towards your backfield, then go, you might have a chance to make it. Four minutes and 50 seconds to play. It is still a second down, the penalty against Missouri. Shaleen is the fullback in the eye. Rozier is the eye back. And the quarterback is Bruce Matheson, the senior, from Superior, Wisconsin. Second down. The fullback. Shaleen, he's over. Mark Shaleen gets the touchdown. The junior fullback, a 230-pounder from Waterloo, Nebraska. And now the Cornhuskers have retaken the lead. They led very early in the game on a first quarter field goal by Kevin Seibel. They have grabbed the lead with less than five minutes to play in the last quarter. The offensive line for Nebraska kind of reached in and said, we're going to just blow this Missouri team off the line. Lots of room in there for Shaleen to go over the top. The red shirt just bury Missouri at the line of scrimmage to get the score. Now Kevin Seibel will try the point after and the 16th Nebraska point if he gets it. The kick is up and traveling, and it is good. 4-46 left at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Nebraska 16, Missouri 13. We'll be right back for the kickoff. There's the scoreboard, 4.46 to play. Nebraska led briefly in the first quarter. Now they have regained the lead with under five to play. Mike Rozier now is over 1,000 yards. Kevin Seibel will kick off. And he hits it deep for the following breeze. And Missouri will go and play from the 20 yard line. So now Missouri first down on their own 20. The Tigers trail by three. Tom Gatewood, a look at the clock. They've got 4.46 to travel. Missouri hasn't had an opportunity to let their special teams go to work the way that Nebraska has had an opportunity. As Seibel has kicked the ball out of, out of bounds, out of the end zone, the punting has kept the ball away. And the scoring drive on the last play, 10 plays, get the ball in. The key was a big run by Rozier on the cutback to get the ball down inside the three-yard line and a penalty moving it half the distance to the goal line as Shaleen capped it off with a score. First down, Missouri, their own 20-yard line. Behind the line of Tracy Mack, thrown for a loss. A loss of about nine. Mike Knox is number 44, a sophomore linebacker who just came in. He is fresh, and he was determined. And what an important hit that is for Nebraska. That's also not the kind of play you're going to need here in this drive, which could be the final drive for Missouri as they try to get close enough for a field goal, perhaps for a tie, or get the score to go ahead. They've got to be less conservative than that play. They've been throwing to Mack coming out of the backfield quite a bit. That's not the kind of play that's going to get them to pay there. Loss of seven, second and 17. Snowden and Green are the backs. Brad Perry now throwing, and it is bounced through the air. It is incomplete. He was looking for Caver. It was broken up by number 10, the safety, Brett Clark. And it was up for grabs there for a moment. Clark has been around that ball all day. Every time there's a tip, number 10 is somewhere nearby. I tell you, but that's the kind of pass that Perry's got to throw. He's got to go up top and get some big yardage in a hurry because there's only four minutes remaining in this quarter. Brad Perry has hit 18 out of 33 for 150 yards. Been intercepted twice, one touchdown pass. Steve Damkroger is out of the game right now. Brent Evans and Mike Knox are backing the line for Nebraska. It's third and 17. If there was ever a big play for Missouri, this would have to be it right now. Third down, 17, their own 13-yard line. Brad Perry. Up the middle, it is intercepted by number 48, Brent Evans. Intercepted by Brent Evans. Nebraska owns the football inside the Missouri 20-yard line. And the crowd now really turns the noise level up. Perry trying to get the ball into Gibbler, his tight end, number 83. Forces the ball in. The coverage was there. Gibbler tried to get to it. No chance. Gibbler lined up a tight end on the left side, trying to come across the middle after having blocked a little bit, trying to slide across. He is not open, not open at all, as Perry tries to force the ball in, and Brent Evans makes a big play. 
Mark Shaleen at fullback. Jeff Smith, the sophomore, is the eye back. This is Shaleen. Nothing there. Trying the middle. Rod Stillman answering for the Missouri Tigers. Time remaining 346. The Cornhuskers, a 24-point favorite, have a three-point lead, 16 to three, to Nebraska's credit and Bruce Matheson and Mike Rozier. When they fell behind by four, they put together an 80-yard drive, and they took it to the end zone to get the lead, lead in the fourth quarter. Now second down and 10. Matheson, the senior quarterback, still has it, and is bound on the 11-yard line. Matheson goes to the 11-yard line, taken down by Taft Sales of Missouri. 3.09 now remaining. Everything think Missouri can do in this situation is to utilize their timeouts in the most efficient manner they can and try to strip the ball carrier or the receiver, try to create a fumble, cause a turnover, knock down a pass, tip a ball up, do anything they can to get possession of the football. The backs against the wall. Now on what would appear to be a passing down, Irving Fryer and Todd Brown are sent back in by Tom Osborne. Third down and seven. Matheson wide open. He'll score. Matheson will score. Not a soul was out in front of him. A 12-yard touchdown run by Bruce Matheson, the quarterback. Missouri did not expect the option play, not the high percentage play, looking strictly for the pass. Everybody playing off, looking for the pass. Nobody up to force the option. And Matheson goes in untouched. Nobody there. Absolutely nobody there as Matheson comes up with the big play. They're expecting the pass, looking inside for maybe a handoff on the inside on the quick trap, which has been their bread and butter. Matheson keeps the ball, goes outside for the score. Boy, he really caught everybody totally by surprise, didn't he? I tell you, Osborne has got to feel pretty good because you put a young quarterback into a situation, in a situation where he's got to come from behind. Turner Gill on the sideline. He's a field general who's got to bring the team back, and he did, and now he gets him some extra, extra on the play by scoring another go-ahead touchdown to put them way out in front and really take Missouri out of the ball game. Looked like about half of the Tigers took the fake. Absolutely. They were looking inside. Again, on that particular situation, the scouting reports say quick trap up the middle to a fullback and or look for a pass. They run the option, and Matheson takes it over to the score. Rod Skillman, the Missouri Tiger, who has the injury holding his arm as he heads toward the near sideline. And it, there's Mike Rozier across the way. Rozier suffering a hip pointer. He got to the Kansas State game. Nonetheless, what a game he has had over now. He goes to the sideline to ice that hip a little bit. If he can play this way with a hip pointer, think what he's like when he's fully healthy. Absolutely, but a lot of character on his part. They may lose him for uh, next week's game against Kansas uh, because of this, because he took a real good shot at the three-yard line after that long run that he made. He took a, a wallop of a tackle, and that probably led to the injury. But... Uh, they really needed them in this ball game. Time remaining, 236. Kevin Seibel trying for his 12th of the afternoon. The kick is good, and the Cornhuskers now enjoy a 10-point lead. It's Nebraska 23 and Missouri 13. Back for the kickoff in just a moment. Yeah. Special low price. Nebraska now leading by 10, 23-13. However, the Cornhuskers, with less than five minutes to play, were still four points behind. But now they've tacked on 14 points. And Nebraska now with a 23 to 13 lead. Kevin Seibel has kicked three field goals, three for three. Here's the kick on the way by Kevin Seibel. He has been hitting them out of the end zone almost all day long. And for Missouri, it'll be a first down on their own at 20 yard line. So it is time, I would say, Tom Gatewood, late in the ball game here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, to think about the Chevrolet players of the game. For Nebraska, what would you say? I'd say Mike Rozier has got to be his selection after uh, going way over 100 yards, now 1,000 yards for the season. He's had one heck of a ball game. I, I look to him at Nebraska. And we'll tell you about our Chevrolet player of the game for Missouri in just a moment. Brad Perry has quarterback all the way, but now Mike Hyde comes in. Hyde playing for the first time, gets the pass away to James Caver. Mike Hyde to James Caver. Hyde is a good passer. He started 
majority of the Tiger football games a year ago. And our Chevrolet player of the game for Missouri is quarterback Brad Perry. Perry has played all the way. He has taken his punishment. He's been sacked five times for about 30 yards. It has hung in there, and he kept his Missouri Tiger team in front until only five minutes remain. Mike Hyde throwing long for number 40, Wallace Snowden. That is incomplete with two minutes to play. So a check for $1,000 will be donated in the name of each player by Chevrolet to the General Scholarship Fund for each player's university. Tom Gatewood, our congratulations to the Chevrolet winners. Absolutely. Rozier played just a sensational football game, and Perry, also a very gutsy quarterback, had to do, did what he, exactly what he had to do, throw the football, and he did it successfully for quite a bit in this ballgame. Third down three in Missouri, and even two minutes to play. This will be handed off to Glenn Malvern, number 32, hoping to get a first down to keep the drive working. And it will be very close. Middle guard Jeff Merrill of Nebraska makes the play. For the Cornhuskers of Tom Osborne, number five of the nation, they'll journey to Lawrence, Kansas to play the Kansas Jayhawks of Don Fambro next week. And for Missouri, it's to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and a game against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. On first down and 10, Hyde has to scramble toward the near sideline and out on the 35-yard line. Hyde will get about five yards on the play, and then he makes the acquaintance of the monster man, Chris Van Norman. Now the problem Hyde has had is uh, his lack of mobility. He is strictly a pocket-type passer. When he has to scramble like that, he's at a distinct disadvantage. You can see, as demonstrated by a couple of passes he's thrown on this drive, he can throw the football. Missouri trailing 23-13, a minute 39 remaining at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Mike Hyde quarterbacking for the first time, throws up the middle. Oh, it is incomplete, intended for Craig White. White, number 87, was hit by Brett Clark, and what a hit that was. And White will be a little slow getting up from this. You'll never see a better hit than this. Number 10, Brett Clark, coming up in that free safety spot, nails. The receiver on the play as he looks inside. Clark, again, around the football all afternoon, has been absolutely fantastic in the secondary. Just everywhere, Craig White, the receiver, number 87, the split in, takes the hit. Brett Clark, number 10. So time being taken here for Craig White. Now Craig will be helped to his feet. He just really had his bell rung with that one. It was some kind of a hit. The coaches call it going through your man. And he followed the ball all the way as Clark put his helmet right on the football, perfectly timed when the ball came into the chest of White. A minute 33 remaining in the Big 8 Conference game here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. A game that Missouri may not win, but they certainly should feel that they have played a very strong football game when it is all over. They had the lead with five minutes to go in the football game. Wallace Snowden is number 40. Snowden breaks this one and comes all the way to midfield and across midfield to the 49-yard line. Sophomore running back Wallace Snowden. One thing about Missouri, I think, Tom, is the fact that they have a lot of very young, very inexperienced running backs who have gained a lot of valuable experience and played very well here today. Particularly under the clutch uh, situation that they've been in, they've had to come through under pressure throughout the ball game. one being the underdogs, and then when they were on top, just trying to stay on top. So they've had a chance to play two or three ball games within the space of a 60-minute football game. Brett Clark is the man who is slowly getting up for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The executive producer of ABC, ABC Sports is Rune Arthur. Coverage of today's game was produced by Eleanor Sanger Rieger. Directed by Ken Fox. Our technical director, Jim Briley. Our associate director, Robert Cowan. The technical manager, Bob Gabrielson. The unit manager, Al Castle. And the assistant to the producer, Kimberly Belton. Our thanks, too, to the SIDs from Missouri and Nebraska. Bill Callahan and Ron Bryant. Mike Hag is throwing for Gibbler, number 83. He's got it at the 20-yard line, nailed on the 19-yard line. And Hyde can throw the ball. Beautiful pass that he threw to tight end Andy Gibbler. Gibbler has the new Missouri school record for receptions. Absolutely. As long as he stays in the pocket, he really has a good field of vision. 
However, if he's confused when he has to flush himself out of the pocket and roll out, he has difficulty throwing the football. Gibbler wide open on the play. Three receptions this afternoon for Gibbler. Green and Snowden are the running backs. First down on the 19, and the pass is out of bounds. That will stop the clock. And the time remaining now in Lincoln is one minute and eight seconds. Nebraska, with a victory here today, would be 6-1 and one on the year and 3-0 and oh in the Big 8. Missouri came into the game with a record of 3-1-2. and two. The two ties the last two weeks in the Big 8. Hyde now has thrown five and completed two. Mike Hyde from St. Louis. A minute, eight seconds left to play. Second down and 10, Missouri, on the Cornhusker 19-yard line. Hyde fires up the middle. Oh! a touchdown beautifully caught a flag has been thrown a flag has been thrown the ball was caught in the end zone by James Caver number 82 but it will be nullified it is a procedure penalty against Missouri and the touchdown pass has been nullified just a brilliant throw again Hyde makes all kinds of adjustments back there but basically it's a drop back type pass Shame to have it nullified by a penalty. On the offense. Second down, 15. Second down, 15, Missouri. They lost the touchdown on the penalty. Now it is second and 15 on the 24 of Nebraska. Green and Snowden are the running backs. He gets the pass away. It is incomplete intended for Wallace Snowden. And I want to tell you, Mike Hyde really took a hit from Mike Knox, but he managed to get it away. Might have just hit his fingertips with it. That's the price you pay being a drop back passer. You're in the pocket and that pocket closes up in a hurry. You have to be very, very courageous because you've got to stand up there under the pressure and let the ball go with the big guns coming right down your throat. Nebraska 23, Missouri 13, 59 seconds left in the football game. Nickelback Tim Holbrook in for Nebraska. Dropping the throw is Hyde. He looks for Gibbler, number 83. It is over, a touchdown. Andy Gibbler, the tight end, number 83, made a beautiful catch, gathering it in, although being covered by Wayne Priner as we look again. Gibbler makes this all on his own. Because the pass is underthrown, it's behind him, but Gibbler comes back and beats the defender to get it, and he knows where the end zone is and manages to slide across for the score. So it is 23-19. Let's see what Missouri will do here. Will they go for two? 53 seconds left, and I would have to believe they're trying to get a two-pointer. Mike Hyde is the quarterback. Give Hyde credit. He passed his team virtually the length of the field, and Missouri now is closed within four points, and now Hyde wants a timeout to talk with the head man, Warren Powers, before they try for the two-point conversion. But Hyde shows that he has a very good arm, and he brought Missouri, a game football team, back almost the length of the field for a touchdown. He sure did. It's just a shame that he had a waste of timeout on that particular play, because if they do the onside kick, they may need that extra timeout in the drive that they might mount to try to get another score. Only 53 seconds remaining in the football game as they talk it over. Warren Powers trying to let Hyde know what the strategy is going to be on the two-point conversion. And on ABC tomorrow, a very big day. You're going to enjoy watching the New York Marathon, the 26-mile-plus 26 event. It'll be coming your way at 10.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 Central Time. The New York City Marathon, and then Howard Cosell at ABC Sports Beat, 5.30 Eastern Time and 4.30 Central Time, as Howard provides an update on the latest on the NFL negotiations on the strike. Now, this is a two-point conversion attempt for Missouri. The Tigers trailing by four, 23-19. Mike Hyde is the quarterback. He just put together an 80-yard drive. He's rolling, and he's throwing, and it's incomplete. It is broken up at the last moment, and Hyde had to take a hit. So, with 53 seconds left in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers are leading the Tigers by four points, 23 to 19, and we'll be coming right back. Change velocity ratio. Change data. When general Horn of Nebraska has all receivers on the front line as they get ready for Missouri's onside kick track. Brad Burdett will be kicking it. And there are all skilled receiver positions up on the front line waiting. 
53 seconds left to play. The ball has to travel 10. 23-19, Cornhuskers lead by four. Now, they gather around, and the squib kick is underway. I don't think that ball has gone 10 yards. It's the fastest ball on the 49-yard line of Missouri. So Nebraska alertly covering the football on the 49-yard line. It's a very unique formation on the kickoff as they made an adjustment on the tee at the last minute, then dribbled the ball down, and Nebraska wisely lunged in front to pick up the ball. They don't have to wait for the ball to go 10 yards. It's just that the team kicking the ball has to make sure the ball goes 10 yards. Many teams, the receiving teams, will sit there and they'll wait because they're so used to hearing 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards. They wait for the ball to actually go 10 yards, and the kicking team winds up recovering the onside. But that time, it didn't work for Missouri. So, Nebraska, first down, 53 seconds left to play. Jeff Smith is the ball carrier, number 28, tries to sweep to the right, gets to the line of scrimmage, and a little bit more, and then has been down. Time House remaining, Missouri has two remaining. As we look at Tom Osborne, the Nebraska coach. And a timeout taken by Missouri to stop the clock. Been an interesting game. It was three to nothing Nebraska at the end of the first quarter. And it was 10 to nine at the half. We'll be coming right back for the closing moments in just a second. Medical report on Turner Gill. He suffered a mild concussion. He will be kept in the hospital tonight for observation. 40 seconds left in the football game. Second down and nine. Nebraska with a four-point lead and owning the football. Matheson, the quarterback, he's a ball carrier. Takes it to the 40-yard line. That may be a first and ten for Nebraska. What an interesting game. It was 3-0 after one quarter. The Cornhuskers led. It was 7-6 to six in favor of Missouri at the half. It was only 10 to nine Missouri after the third quarter and Missouri still led with less than five minutes to play. But Nebraska scored twice in a hurry. One an 80 yard drive and then they cashed in a turnover. Missouri came right back to go 80 yards and score. And here we are Tom 23 to 19 with 21 seconds left. Second time this season that Osborne has had to try to come back from behind earlier. The only loss of the season to Penn State just short. He came back with a minute and 18 remaining with Turner Gill leading an 80 yard drive that brought them to a, a 24 to 21 lead and then they lost 27 to 24 in the ball game. seconds remaining now. Nebraska third down, inches to go for a first down. Quarterback Bruce Matheson, who got into the real fun of the thing with a scoring jump here this afternoon, goes to get a first and ten. Missouri now has used up its last timeout, and the clock will be winding down. We show 17 seconds left to play. Now the clock stopped while the chains are moved. The ball is on the 39-yard line of Missouri. Next week, Missouri will go to Stillwater to play the Oklahoma State Cowboys and go against the nation's number one running back, Ernest Anderson. And now four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, the handshakes, and the game is over. And the 76,400 who came here today certainly got their money's worth and saw a marvelous football game. Nebraska coming from behind to win it by a score of 23 to 19. We'll be returning to Lincoln in just a moment. On a beautiful October afternoon, we saw Nebraska come from behind. They took the lead with less than five minutes to play in the game. They go on to defeat the Missouri Tigers in such an entertaining football game. It was 23 to 19 Nebraska. Our thanks to Tom Gatewood, our expert analyst. Once again, the final score today, Nebraska 23, Missouri 19. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what the friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.